this, I'm going to start now because it's a minute or so after the hour, and this is the uh, Northampton Historical Commission meeting on Monday. Uh, could you close the door? Possibly. Oh, Monday, um, March 25th, 2019. Um, and uh, we're going to go away. The first item on our agenda is that the ma meeting may be video or audio recorded. And the next item on the agenda is a uh, request or invitation for general public comment generally for any topic that is not already on um, the, uh, the agenda. Uh, but it's an opportunity for anyone in general to make a comment. Is there any such request? Okay. Um, and the third item on the agenda is a crew of minutes. Sarah sent out um, some uh, two sets of minutes from earlier this decade um, and uh, are there any comments on those? Um, I had a few corrections um, on um, actually both of them I just had questions I wanted clarification I guess um, on the September 24th minutes um, on the left second page review local and historic district standards um, the very last sentence in, in that talks about having a some sort of an outreach uh, to new owners and realtors, and it talks about an event. And I just do we mean like a training, um, education, advocacy? Um, it could have been any roundtable. Yeah, um, we we didn't make we have not made any progress. Okay. Okay. So I could add to future agendas. So event everyone's okay. I guess leaving it. And then on the second set, should I go on? Um, I, so I wasn't clear, the topic came up when we were talking about the round tail property, about um, MHC review, and it was brought up that, the, um, the question was brought up whether the MHC review only applied to historic tax credit properties. And I don't believe that that's true. Was that resolved, Sarah? Do you know? That, yeah, that, that's all I have for you. I know the answer to that. I do, yeah. Um, well, the Academy of Music is a good example. Not a tax credit project, right. but it had to be reviewed by MHC. So because it's a deeded, uh, there's a deed restriction on the property that MHC manages. The so city actually holds that for rental. Right, it doesn't really matter who the owner is, it's just that since there's a deeded restriction on the property, MHC has to review any changes to it, irrespective of tax credits. We didn't get any tax, not eligible for tax credits there. Yeah, I'm just bringing it up because I personally, you know, my profession have had to have a lot of work reviewed by MHC. These are not tax credit properties at all. I'm having one work review right now, it's a cemetery, so. Yeah. Um, but it was my understanding that their comments were provided in relation to the historic tax credit program, not in relation to any other type For of program. Round Hill. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Well, they will, there's a, Jim, you're, you have to sign basically a deed restriction for that property. You get tax credits, but you get a deed restriction on what you can do there for a certain time period. I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Well, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's mostly for tax credits for Round Hill, but there are, like you said, other projects that get reviewed yeah. without tax credits being right. involved. Okay. So we, we should probably just get some clarification about that so we're all aware of what the, their, their role is and when to expect. Because they kind of, you know, they did communicate us with us well in this last project. And, um, and then the only other thing on those minutes is, I, I believe David was a, in attendance at the January 28th meeting, and his box was not checked. Well, I, th I think when you're spending state or, or federal funds for a project, I think you're obligated, and it's a historic structure or in a historic district, and all of downtown Northampton is a historic district, but I think then you're obligated to get reviewed. But if you just own a downtown Main Street building, you're not spending federal or state funds to fix it up, you don't have to get a review. So 
like the courthouse, I assume they have to get a review. They're spending. Yes, the charity is for this one. It's not the state of the room. Oh, the MHC is something like that, apparently. So I don't know. We, we, we <laughs> need to be clarified. Yeah, I, I, I only listed the tax credit program because Massachusetts referenced the tax credit program okay. specifically in the uh, correspondence. Okay. And uh, there's just a couple of typos in here, Sarah, so I don't want to hand this to you. Okay. But, and David was not here because you told me to do His name is mentioned in the minutes. Oh, was it? Yes. Under oh, yes, okay. <laughs> 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 you really can't bring it up on my phone. Right, the one where I was listed as being here. Okay, we'll call for that. Okay. Before we go further, I wonder, um, I'd like to, if I could, I'd like to introduce Emily Essie's uh, to our uh, commission. She is an architect. She uh, steps into some uh, wonderful uh, Shu Krasinski, who, who represents uh, the architectural profession onto this uh, uh, onto this body ex officio, and, and uh, we are looking forward to having her um, hopefully for years to come uh, give us advice and insight from, from that uh, aspect. Um, no, you want to say a little bit about your, what you do here and, and uh, for the same commission and audience. I know some people here. <laughs> <laughs> Small town. Uh, I'm a registered architect. I own a sole proprietor, just a one-person firm, um, and specialize in small commercial and uh, residential, but with historically appropriate, sensitive projects. So um, I was drawn to the board. I just one of my favorite things about Western Mass is Elm Street, and uh, to be part of that history is, is going to be fun. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, Emily. We're really glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can we approve the minutes? We discussed it. Great. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> um, all those in favor, we've had discussion. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, motion. First. I just said, is there a motion to approve oh, okay. the minutes? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Sure. Okay. Uh, all those, is there any discussion? Any more discussion? On all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the um, public hearing to determine whether the building at 47 Chapel Street, map ID 38A-029, to be determined preferably preserved pursuant to the Northampton Demolition Review Ordinance, Chapter 161 of the General Code. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Yes. Hi. You just you join us at the table, it's fine. And to keep your voice loud enough for so everybody in the room can hear you. My name is John Hansel. My company's New Way Homes. Um, I don't know if any of you have taken a ride by 47 Chapel Street. We all have. Oh, we all have? Yeah. Okay. Maybe not Emily, but Google Maps. I know what it looks like. Okay. Well, I do have the pictures where it has been right. yeah. uh, by the city of Northampton. Uh, the building commissioner told me that he had to evict the people that have been living there. And he didn't feel good about it, but the place is shall we say, quite in disrespair. disrepair. Um, I do have all the exterior photos if you'd like to pass this around at all. Can you pass it around? Yeah. Sure. Sure. We're going. You can see where they had some roof, uh, the roof was going, so they decided to put a tarp on it. And that was how they fixed the place. Notice that the uh, tarp of the windows on the glass. Correct. And, then, and look, what's the interior condition and structure? I have some pictures of those. Um, okay. Of course, with no roof, the water is just, it's the, everything's just falling down as far as the ceilings mm -hmm. go. If anyone in the audience would like to look over his shoulder or something like that, we try to keep it informal. And it's not just full of debris. It's, I mean, this is the picture where, right through these, like I said, the, the roof is blowing off as it is. And when they did go to repair it, there was a tarp over the whole house. Is there a difference in the degree of preservation uh, for the various 
um, shed additions that would put onto the house. Now there's just the original house at that addition as those um, additions on the back. I really couldn't tell you what they they look like. Okay. So this picture has to go this way. Mm -hmm. Right here is a picture of this basement stairs. I was have been down the basement once before, but somebody was with me. Uh, I wasn't about to go down there myself because if I were to fall, I don't think anybody would have found yeah, me. Yeah, no, I understand. So it was. Mm. So basically, right now, there's not a there's a lot of holes in the roof, and as you stated yourself, that a lot of the windows have been broken out, um, and it must be decades that the house. It's been going down like this. It just didn't happen overnight. So you're the, what's your role again? I'm sorry, you're the owner of it? Correct. Okay. And when did you become owner of it? I'd say about uh, two weeks ago. Oh, okay. historic. 
of personalities that lived there for long stretches. And actually changed hands. I can't know whether they're all in the same family or what, but uh, no big overarching narrative. I plan on building is one I've done before in the town. Uh, it will fit on a lot nicely. And I think right now what we have there is pretty much a blight to the neighborhood. Uh, the house that is existing. Um, and I think a new house would bring somebody into the town that would care about the place. Yeah. Uh, they care about uh, the town. It's pretty bad looking inside. I mean, not hand up that sure Yeah, yeah. The outside, like I said, is the roof is blowing off the streets. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the roof has been on there for a few years. Uh, so I, mean, I, I think a new house would be a, a big plus for the neighborhood, uh -huh. a big plus for the town. Uh, but What's the foundation of the, of the thing? I know you couldn't go down in there and open the same brick you could, but well, is, it, is it a field sign? It must be. 18, 17, it might have been. I was down there once. But like I said, one, the day I went and took these pictures, I was by myself. And I'm like, I looked at those stairs. We took that picture with the stairs there. Uh, no, I understand. Like I said, I would have been eaten up before somebody found me. Um, as, you, as you can imagine, our job is not to pass it on housing based on the housekeeping of the previous residents. So uh, we have to kind of overlook the, you know, yeah. Like that. Well, it's um, not just the debris in there, it's a condition of what's happened for, from the years of neglect with the roof yes. not being on it and there's really nothing of any historical architect in there i'm kind of surprised the age that there wasn't something to it well the thing is that uh, and we talked about this in the past it, our job is not simply to preserve the, the few um you know grand and glorious houses that the city has personally but also to preserve the vernacular so called vernacular houses of the city that the certain neighborhoods where there's no grand and glorious house, but the neighborhood contains houses that reflect what Northampton was, who Northampton was at, at a certain period of time. Sometimes they're workers' houses, like around Florence. Sometimes they were uh, Victorians. Uh, um, sometimes they were even, uh, 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 you know, post-war houses around uh, uh, Ryan Road and so forth. This may come under our, our review. Um, so, you know, we're, we're interested in preserving neighborhoods and. Sometimes some of those houses are um, just rough edged old vernacular houses that, that, um, uh, that we're going to handle. We don't want to go to a ridiculous end, uh, to a ridiculous extreme. If the house can't be brought back, we understand that too. Um, but that's kind of what we wanted to talk about with you today. We're not making any, any important conclusions whatsoever. We just want to talk about what condition it's in, what it would take to bring it back. The bottom line is, even if we were to um, apply demolition delay to it, the maximum amount of time uh, the delay can last is a year. So if, if, if uh, someone were, were dedicated to tearing a house down, they would have that right. And that's been done many times in the city, uh, unfortunately. So um, it's, a, it's a process of figuring out what the best way is to look at an old building and figure out whether it's salvageable and uh, or any part of it is salvageable. Uh, uh, or not, and then, and then uh, making a decision based on that. Um, so, any, any thoughts on this? I mean, well, when I drove by, it's on a corner. Um, there's a field to the right of it, and there's a home, you know, there are some homes across this, on the other side of the street. Um, and I just felt that. Um, you know, being that it's not a home that is, you know, smack, you know, in between other homes mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood, um, I was in, in the condition of the house from what I could see from the ex, you know, from the outside. Um, I just felt that it was far enough gone that mm -hmm. um, I didn't see the. I, I, I didn't see the virtue in, in trying to save this one. Okay. 
that's my opinion. Um, I'll weigh in. I looked at the criteria that we had, the evidence, and there are actually nine, nine items. Um, and it appeared to me that this has only uh, met three, and those would be the age, um, because I believe that the building inspector uh, dated it to earlier in the 1800s. That was his guess. His guess. Okay. So um, it has a history and social history. Um, you know, I think that it does have a role in the streetscape there because the size of it is such that it um, it doesn't take up a whole lot. It uh, reflects the pattern of the houses leased on rust, and in that kind of Chapel Street Laurel um, neighborhood. And um, again, the social history part of it. But then I but I looked at the other six items on here, and I think it I don't think it meets it fails. So I would be. Um, in court, in agreement with Polly. Do you have a good one? Um, just construction background is extremely expensive to make habitable. It's undersized, the roof is, um, and it's, it's a really far gone. Mm -hmm. so, um, Am I allowed to comment on the proposed design or no? No. Okay. So the way it works not only is that we have to, if you, to comment on design, we have to, um, we have to first vote to have it properly preserved. Okay. We should be putting a demo delay on it. And if we yeah. do that, then there's an option if the owner is willing to negotiate what gets put there. That's how the process works. So yeah, so sometimes yeah, we, we, have have we, have to, we have to remind ourselves of that because I know our intention is, our inclination is to try to redesign stuff. Mm. No, well said. Um, if you know the, the if um, if somebody is is in a hurry, then um, they may want to be part of a building or replicate a building even um, um, to help bring their their delay to a lesser um, uh, to a lesser time. But I don't think that's that's relevant unless we preserve it. Um, is there a, is there a a motion to carefully preserve this building to apply that motion to it. Okay, not hearing, they're not hearing one. Um, then do we need to have a vote negative or do we, can we just? That would be cleaner to have a vote. Be it would be cleaner to have a vote, not to okay. um, So is there a motion to not apply a motion to let uh, to this outcome. Is that moved? Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there a discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. No doubt we'll let you. Thank you. Could, may we, uh, could I ask you to keep the photographs? Yes, sir. Uh, because I'd like to preserve them for a court and a uh, library because we like to call it we traditionally do this for a lot of old buildings that are being torn down, uh, so that there is a record of what was there, and this is a pretty good record. Um, so, uh, if somebody comes along to the library in 15 years and says, "Well, you know, what what houses used to be around the, the hospital?" Um, it says, "What does demolition by neglect look like?" <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is what's called demolition by neglect. Where you, just, uh, you know, you're not taking it down, but you're just letting it get to a point where it's more or less a fountain. So, um, did not know you, uh, but the previous uh, owner. But, um, so, uh, you are free to take it down. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for your cooperation and for all the work you did in taking those pictures. That was very helpful. No problem. I appreciate your time also. And I'd be glad to talk to you afterwards. Some other time, with your inspiration, would you like it? I don't know if I'm all right. <laughs> no, she's not. Well, <laughs> 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 I'm always looking for advice, especially if it's yeah. Um, at least not on any project that's before us. All right. Um, so um, but the, the neighbor, project is no longer before us. Well, this is going to fit pretty much the same envelope of what it was there, so I won't be really encompassing any more of the lot than it was before. Yeah. So the thing is, it's so it's just scale. Just a little bit. I mean, because the houses back then were just. Basically. And so, 
it's a little bit larger, but it's not going to be so much that it's obnoxious. And I, I try to fit in the neighborhood. Everybody does have a lot of opinions of what will fit in. Mm -hmm. Like I say, that's why I was saying I'm always willing to listen. And because uh, I'd rather, I've done a few houses up here, and I want to do quite a few more. And I don't want to do anything that someone's going to think is not fitting in what I do because you know, it's easy to get a bad reputation. You feel pain that they're doing. Now, are you going to need any, any uh, variances in building there? No. Okay. Because I know the, the neighbor's driveway is practically right up against this house. Isn't that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Put the permit in. Of course, then I got the the, the the hold, you know, to go to the meeting, and um, you know, so it does fit with the side lines and the setbacks and where the driveways go and everything else. Uh, but then again, of course, that person will be my neighbor too while I'm building the house. So I want to get along with that person very well and everybody else on the street. Love to hear that. That's great. Because you know, you come into a neighborhood, if you don't want to upset anybody, you want to work with them, not against them because they can make your, you know, you want to work, work with them. And I just finished one up on Stoddard, and the neighborhood was great. I made sure that anybody had any issues, which nobody did, thank God. So I mean, I must have done something correct. Yeah. Um, that everything went smooth. But like, I always try to meet the neighbors and like, I want to be here, here's my thank number. You. Before you, know, you call anybody, if you're upset about something, call me. You know. As you build this, if I could just ask, and this is just a preference, if you could look around the neighborhood at the small the detail of the finish of the of the I old do that all day. What? I do that every day. I drive it down. Okay, I know you do. But I mean, that's every that's my job. It's like I'm, you know, it's like so, I, it's, so that the small finish points of the house to yeah. match as much as possible with uh, neighboring houses. You could in line with the neighborhood. That's and, great. And work with a lot of realtors, and they give me um, a lot of advice on what I should do, shouldn't do, what they would like me to do. And they have a lot of opinions, and uh, I know Craig too. He has a few opinions, and I try to listen to them all. Okay. So I think one of your neighbors is sitting in this room. Uh, Who's that? That's me. I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, which would be actually in the uh -huh. water, right? Which where's that at? I'm um, adjacent, uh, just a Rust Avenue, the next house up the street. What street is that? On Rust Avenue. The, the house. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's a driveway one. All right. I want to talk outside. So, like I said, I, I do. I do try to make everything fit in. So. Well, we've. we've um, I mean, we've waived. It's it's a nice old house, right? And there are reasons that it could be preserved, but uh, in the end, we can't keep anybody from. Tearing it down, so I'd rather uh, because that, the delays are only max of a year. So I would rather that you be, you know uh, work properly with you and ask you to you know be historic sensitive when you when you build this new this pro new project and be very nice to this guy over here. Okay. I might need to borrow some. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go, go buy a cup of coffee <laughs> or, or a beer. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you. your time. Um. School. Um, we did Hubbard first. We were three quarters of the way through Rogers when it disappeared. And um, so now we've been working on the Gateway Hall. So we've gotten all of our approvals required from Mass Historic for tax credits. And um, we got a series of approvals from you guys at the last meeting, uh, which I assume, even though we're in a, I had to reapply those approvals we got mm -hmm. still. So we're sort of down to the last issue, which is um, the light fixtures on the facade of the building, and specifically the light fixtures facing the public way. So um, we went before the planning board 
couple weeks ago, and we got all of our light fixtures approved, so they meet all of the zoning bylaws and you know, that regulate glare and intensity and light spill and all that stuff. So we didn't have any problems. There are no questions at all, basically. So we were able to get that approval. Um, so I'll just quickly go through this presentation, which I guess last time I didn't do it because we didn't have this up, but I won't dwell on it too long. Existing lights, this was a zoning uh, issue. You know, so green is, these are all the existing lights that were on the site. Most of them are gone now. Um, these are the proposed lights, uh, including the street lights out on the street. So we have a new parking lot with full lights in it. Um, and we have a series of lights on and around buildings. And right now we're specifically talking about Gaywith Hall, this building right here. So this is Round Hill right here. Um, that's our parking lot. This is called Skinner. I think it's out of the public view. This is Coolidge, which isn't really getting renovated, but we'll get a few new light fixtures. This is the boiler house, which are renovating and uh, the engineer's cottage, which we're renovating as well. So this is a commercial building, Gaywith, that we're talking about. The other ones are residential uses. So this building is being converted to from residential. It had the big, had the dining hall for the Clark School in it, and it had a bunch of dorm rooms and um, I think a few offices had an addition on the back that was from the 70s, which we took down. Um, and so we've been renovating this to standards of the National Park Service. And we've been working on this project since 2014. So, and we're expected to be completed this summer sometime. Tommy, just have a question. On the existing additions, can you flip back, please? Uh, on the left-hand side, so the south part of the property, along that property, the edge uh, going into the site. These yeah. were all yeah. taken down. Were they street lights? Like they were big pole lights, lights okay. yeah. So it was illuminating a driveway. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Those are all gone now. No. They're still oh, they just turned off. And then they're not turned off yet. Okay. Well, that was a that was a uh, condition of the yeah, planning department. Off. Yeah, that they didn't plan to be turned off. So. Um, so this, this was the main entry into the property. That's going to become a secondary entry. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't meant to be used, and there was a condition of the uh, planning board that it needs to be um, turned off and removed, which we will do. Thank you. Uh, so these are the light fixtures that are on the exterior of the building. It's just a quick overview. Um, again, Round Hill Road out here. This is the main entry to the building. Originally, the main entry was right here, and then they built this addition right here, and they put in another entry there, and then they built this addition, and I guess it was entered through this way, and then they built this addition here, uh, entered through the building. So this thing right here, that half uh, octagon, or pentagon, is um, a new addition to that building because we used to come off of a porch which is still there or a porch there. But um, each one of these former entries, let's see if I can get this to move along. There. Tom, could you go back? The new entry is going to be on the far right hand side. Yeah, this is the that new the main entry to yeah. the building. So actually, we're going to use we, We've accommodated this will be a, an entry that people will use, and then this will be an entry that people will use. This is um, like a delivery area, so Jim gets, Jim Hebert from Check Riders, that's the company that's moving in here. He gets some light, small deliveries of paper, nothing big, no tractor trailer trucks. So that's, and that traditionally has been the rear entry of the building. And then this was a big outdoor yard here with two exits to it. There was an entry to a basement here. Um, we already talked about this last time, but there's some mechanical equipment here that was already there, transformer, uh, uh, generator that we're screening. Uh, so we took, we took care of that. And it, you can see it's got pathways going all the way around the whole building. So we've got multiple exits around the building. Um, there, 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 and back 
here that we need to eliminate because to like these, these sidewalks going around the, the building and um, we have to put exit signs at those e those uh, exits and we're required to light exits uh, with emergency lighting um, just one step backwards the planning board allowed us to have these lights um, with the condition that they be on a motion sensor so all of these uh, exterior lights will be on motion sensors. Um, this is just the architectural plan. So round hill. The, the lights really that we're talking about now are up higher on the towers. So there's two here, two there. There's one there at this entry here. We're preserving uh, a new old light fixture here. Two there, one there, one there, one there. We, we were proposing one here, but we, um, we got rid of that. And, um, um, given, the, given that the entrance, the yeah. main entrance is now to the right, and the, uh, could you go Oh, ahead? sorry, okay. Um, well, yeah. the main entrance. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the main entrance. Right, to the yeah. right and there's a parking lot that extends yeah. that way um, and that, that uh, there is no parking to the left eventually um, all of the light fixtures as currently identified are all on the street side and the side to the west whereas the entrance and parking lot where we're going to be coming and going is actually to the east mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it struck me that, that the light seems to be more, even though there is a, uh, an existing sidewalk from the days when it was a dormitory and right. children walked around. Um, but functionally, that, that roadside facade is not really an access point for the building. If there's an emergency exit on and so forth. Everybody's going to be directed to, to the parking lot and the building, obviously. and, and uh, why, why is why is the lighting well, towards the street if that's not the area where people are coming? There's, going? there's a few things. The, the one, one of the things is that this is a business; it's not a residence. I think the lighting requirements for a business are very different than for residents. And I think the lighting requirements for this building in the age we live in are very different than when that building was built as a residence. They had little lights on the porches. And I'm sure there was a curfew. People had to be in at a certain time. This is a business where people can come and go between. Uh, and people are going to, um, people who live in Hubbard over here might park in this lot at night. So there's going to be traffic going back and forth across here. And there, there certainly will be traffic. There's a big handicap ramp out here. You're certainly, this will still be an entry to the building because our reception desk is located right here so that that person can see this entry and that entry. So if we were just like gonna close this off and close these off, I think your argument would be perfectly valid, but we're not. This person has to regulate that and that entry there. And this is a big outdoor yard here that people are gonna use all the time. They've already been using it for some community functions. So there's traffic across the street with people going to the parking lot. I, I, I think that, you know, if people work in that building at night, they should be allowed to walk around the property in, with light. I, I think it's very different than a residence where it's okay if it's dark, it's your own private property. If you trip and fall, you're not gonna sue yourself. Um, but it's very different for a business, I think. Mm -hmm. I think security is one issue. Liability is another big issue. Um, and I think that that building needs its ground slit for those reasons. And very, very different than the time period that that building was built in. No, yes. indeed. The question that comes to my mind though is this is, exterior lighting necessarily affects the building that are, the, the, the environment of the building. And it's surrounded now by, on four sides by residential um, housing. One of those buildings you helped turn into a residence, but for the residents of that building, it's now very much a residential building, and I'm sure they regard it as home. Um, and certainly, there are the uh, residents there, and the residents to the to the east and to the north. 
Um, so resident, so it's a, it's a, it's functionally a business building in, in a residential neighborhood now. Um, and and uh, and we're not talking about um, interior lighting. In it. We're talking about lights that that actually are hard to see from inside this commercial building, but are very visible constantly from everyone everywhere outside the building. So um, that, I, I'll just leave it there. But that that part of my concern. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what what it is you're getting at. Um, well, the, the, the sake of um, I will, 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 when I let you finish presenting. Well, okay. I, I think you just said you. I think that my impression is that you've very clearly and very attractively established a pattern of of access to the facility, the driveway in, a parking lot with parking spaces, landscape, attractive access to the to the main entrance. Very nicely done. Um, and I don't frankly have the slightest question about how people will anticipate entering that building. Right. And any any office building in America, I mean, if we're all used to, it, has a parking lot. You approach it through the big main door, and there you are. True, and, but and and uh, uh, the number of people walking up the hill from from um, uh, Elm Street is probably very. And entering through the uh, the old uh, 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 door there in the mid of the building is probably a very small number, and in, in truth be told. Um, especially doing so uh, at night after dark uh, when the building is largely closed. Well, so, um, it's just hard it, to imagine why it is that when you walk down a residential street, regular houses, mm -hmm. they can have sconces, porch lights, all in their house, lighting up the front of their building, and street lights. And, and these things make a neighborhood nice and welcoming and safe. Why that idea wouldn't apply to this? I think you've done a good job with the, well, the street lights are out, outside of your right. purview and hours, and they're fine. Um, the, uh, the lighting underneath the, uh, the porch roof had not been called into question at all. Um, sconces adjacent to the doors not called into question at all. Uh, the, the, what, you, what you don't see in the residences um, is are these sudden second floor, halfway up the second floor wall mounted uh, uh, LEDs that are meant to wash the walls and make the appearance of the building more, more uh, predominant in the evening. Well, I'll continue, but um, <laughs> there is a reason for this madness. Um, um, Okay, uh, I'll just go to the front. So, uh, two cents. Sorry, having a hard time controlling this. Okay, so that's the front facade that we're talking about. There's two lights here. So, this whole facade, the lower level, is just full of landscaping. So if we were to mount lights down here at this level here, we'd need to clear out all that landscaping because otherwise it wouldn't do the job that we're trying to get it to do, which is light the walkway in front of the building. So that's the main reason they're mounted up high, is to spread the light out, at least out to that walkway. And again, the light levels were approved by the city, so we're not spilling over, you know, I mean, not more than like 30 feet, not even close to the property line. So. We've got two lights here, two lights there, two lights here. And I think that they complement the architecture. They're very symmetrical. Um, they're in line with the windows, the sashes of the windows. I think they're in keeping with the scale. They're very, very small. And you know, you can see that's what we're taking down. There's one of those on every single facade. And this is what we're replacing. I carried in in my backpack. These are the fixtures that um, you know, will be, that's the really the, the fixture in question. But it's fully shielded, it's all down, and it's meant to, has to have a little bit of spread to light the pathways in front of it and get beyond the landscape. So, um, let's see. The, and so the other issue that I mentioned before is they have to be controlled by motion sensors. We had to figure out where the motion sensors were going to go. 
Um, so we need enough around the building so, so when people walk around the building that they'll um, turn on the lights. So these were the spots that we picked. They're in, the, in corners, so each one of them is in a little corner, a niche of the building. So we're really trying to get those in a spot where they just wouldn't be very visible, but they still have to be up about, oh, well, they're about eight to 10 feet off the ground. Uh, and they're small little things. This is, you know, these are these two cylinder lights right there. But we have no choice about those. So this was just a quickie. <laughs> it's stuck in a corner there. That actually is a corner of the building. Mm -hmm. there. Okay, so they're going to be mounted like this. Um, we talked to the historic consultant about where to put these. Um, you know, he would have preferred that they be on little poles mounted around the walkways, but it just the functionality of them, I don't think, would work. I mean, that that's what we determined they really wouldn't function and they'd get knocked over by um, the little plows that plow the driveway, the walkways and stuff like that. So we're trying to put them in the corner. One thing that we're going to do, uh, a mounting method that makes these a little bit less appealing than if we did it the way these sconces are done is, and that we're going to drill a hole in the brick this big for a half inch conduit. And then we're gonna mount the electrical box on the exterior of the building, and then the motion sensor on that electrical box. So that motion sensor is a small little device, but it's gonna be a little bigger because it's gonna be mounted on an electrical box. So that's a effort to stay within what it is you're asking us to do, which is not core out the brick. These are two different motion sensors we're looking at. They're both about the same size, they're just like um, shown at different scales, but I think that this is probably what we're gonna use if we can get it in black. So, but that will be mounted directly to an electrical box on the facade of the building. So these are the two lights we're talking about. This is that cylinder, eight inches tall, four inches wide, and that's that little light there, that, oh, just a little small one. And these we're mounting underneath the porches. So there are the porches that are existing. They're um, big lights, not dissimilar from that, just a little smaller. So we're replacing them with so these. And these um, will just go into an existing electrical box. It's already there. And this is an example of uh, a building that we got tax credits from for in Greenfield that we renovated last year. And these are similar style of lights that we use there. What's the location of that? You know where the transportation center is? Yes. Yeah. It's right across the street from it. So the district attorney's office is here. So it had been a warehouse um, for many, many years because it's right next to the railroad track. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Many of these windows didn't even exist um, because it was a warehouse, so we were allowed to put in new windows in the grid that was there already, and then we were allowed to use these lights to light the handicap ramp here and light the entry to the building. And then these two were more decorative. So, um, and that's what they look like. They're very small, they're about this size here. Um, it's them up close. So they're pretty inconspicuous for the most part. And they do the job they're meant to do. This, oh man. Uh, 
that's so that every this is a building everybody knows in town. They have these little lights on it. So those are just a little bit bigger than what we're planning to use. They're a little taller. And that's uh, the one sample that we put up just so everybody could see if that's uh, what it is in place. So you see this thing is we're taken down. That's the new one. There would be two there, so that one's mounted. That's a uh, location for the the other one. Should we do it? That's what it looks like up close. And the the thing I want to talk about with these lights is that they really are mounted in a brick field, not destroying any of the the cornices, the friezes, the any of the decorative brick brickwork. We're not touching at all. So this is mounted in the field of bricks. We had to take out one brick to do it. And when we take this light down right there, there's going to be a big hole behind it that we have to patch. And so my point is, is that should the building use ever change and anybody wants to get rid of these lights, it's easy to patch a brick in that hole. So this is not a permanent change to that building. We're not de destroying a character defining feature. We're not making a permanent change to the building. And so the thing I, want, I actually wanted to show about this is just to recognize all the changes that have happened to this building. This was the original entry right here. That little curved one in the corner didn't even exist. This was an um, entry to that part of the addition there. It had all this decorative ironwork above. It had shutters everywhere. So the building is changing with time constantly. Ever since it's been built, it has changed. And we're changing it again. And I don't think that the, the uh, historic commission, I think the historic commission and the documents that you guys have written recognize the fact that buildings are not frozen in time, that they do change over time. And that we're trying to make sensitive changes with fixtures that are in scale with the rest of the building. And I, I think the discussion about um, whether or not people are ever going to walk out on those sidewalks in front of the building and whether or not they should have light, I think that's a moot point because people will, should be allowed to walk out there and that building shouldn't have to be dark, totally dark at night. Um, I think that's an unreasonable request that the building be completely dark at night. So there was one other... Um, that, that, would, that request certainly did not come from the commission, that, that the sidewalks were well lit by the I mean, so well, the that, if you're saying that we are saying we want that side of the building to be cast with pitch darkness, it's not anything like the reality. Well, it would, it would, it would, it's alongside this well lit street. It would be. Well, anyway. And, okay. So and and, okay, let mind. me just move on. Sorry. Um, I knew this wouldn't be easy. <laughs> well, no, no, I just don't put <laughs> words in my mouth, please. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. For me, I, I do think that my impression is that, is that it would be very dark up there, that the street lights don't illuminate those sidewalks in front of the building, don't do a good job of illuminating the property because there's such a big distance between the street light and the building. But we have a difference of opinion. So there's one other thing I wanted to um, go over that I'm, I'm a little confused about in the, um, the historic guidelines. So, I was looking at your ordinances, and um, so there's a number of things that I was wondering about. So, we have to apply for a certificate of appropriateness. Certain projects are exempt from um, your purview, uh, and it's listed in here what, which, which projects are exempt. And number 14 under the list is lighting fixtures in conformance with the city of Northampton zoning regulations. So, and, and I talked to Sarah about this, and the response was, um, well, you're doing over the whole building, so we have purview over everything. But, you know, that's not exactly what your, 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 your ordinance says, because later on it says, if you are not exempt, in other words, you, you have to get a certificate of appropriateness, um, then it's, so what it exactly says is for non-exempt projects, non -exempt, if you're non-exempt, all other projects not exempted above 
require a certificate of appropriateness or certificate of hardship from the commission. So in other words, you, it's just basically reiterating that um, if you're exempted, you don't have to get a certificate of appropriateness. And then let down below it, it says prior to any construction, alteration, or demolition that in any way affects the exterior architectural features, except those activities exempted. So two times it goes up, it says that um, exempted, it, it, it doesn't say we have, that nowhere in the bylaws does it say you have prior, you have control over every single feature on the building. It specifically says three places that exempted projects are exempted. It doesn't say it have any other language anywhere else. It says anything different. It says if you're exempted, this project, these lights are a project, are exempted, then they're exempted. So I'm, I'm a little confused about that. Um, and then in the design fundamentals, um, let's see. So it, it does say that you have, uh, that you, uh, these, the design fundamentals are, are not, these are guidelines, they're not uh, requirements. But they say you have purview over exterior or facade changes to buildings that would damage historic features or are not otherwise readily reversible. Um, and then one of the sections is uh, lighting. So it says the regulations for lighting are they should be carefully considered, which we're trying to do. Standards of lighting are, are as follow, following. New light fixtures should be of a design and scale that's appropriate to the style. So we could argue that the design is not appropriate. We could say, I think we could all agree that the scale is appropriate. It's a very small scale fixture. It says elimination should be fully shielded from inside the fixture so it's not visible from adjacent buildings. We passed that guideline. Up lighting, not allowed, we passed that guideline. Wall packs and floodlights are discouraged. It is recommended that they re be removed and replaced with shielded low glare fixtures and aimed at the object intended for illumination. We passed that. Motion activated lighting for driveways or walkways does not require commission approval. So, you know, that one piece, motion activated fixtures, exempts us from this, um, this uh, approval. Um, the un and then energy efficiency, we pass that. Underground placement of wiring, we pass that. Lighting must conform to the city of Northampton's regulations, we pass that. So uh, there are multiple places in the code that appear to ex specifically exempt lighting. And nowhere in the code does it say, unless it's part of a bigger project. I think that that's always been like an unwritten rule with most of the commissions that if you get approval, you have to get approval for everything that we want you to. <coughs> I think that it doesn't say that. So, so um, I think that if we're look to just just in general talking about the architecture, the big thing that came up in the beginning was we're drilling big holes in the building for electrical boxes. So um, I think that what needs to be understand about understood about that is that these are not these are reversible changes to the building and they don't affect character defining features of the building. So now we're left with, um, okay, well, we're mounting the lights up high on the walls. There were never lights there before. Not historically, are they or are they not historically in keeping with the building? They obviously were not there originally. Um, they were not needed originally. We're changing the building's use. For, it's a business now, it's not a residence. Um, and I think that the code recognizes that changes can occur to buildings over time. So I feel like the light fixtures on this building that are so small and so inconspicuous are a minute part of this project in comparison to all the other things we're doing to this building and all the hoops that we are gladly jumping to get this building up into use, renovated um, in a historically <coughs> meaningful way, and kept alive rather than falling apart and being bulldozed someday. 
So I, I, I just I feel strongly that these are exempted and that they are a tempest in a teapot. They're a minor thing. So um, that's pretty much what I have to say. Terry, do you want to address the, um, the first issue of time? Yeah, I'm the, all I can say is that the commission's been consistent in that interpretation. It's like a site plan review if, if something changes. It's not um, written down anywhere, though. Uh, but it's not specifically written for site plan. It's it specifically either. exempted in here, multiple locations. But when the commission reviews a certificate of appropriateness, they, they look at the entire design and how that will affect the, but the integrity of the historic district. So if all of the things that were exempted were pulled out from those designs, that wouldn't be a complete picture. So in, in this instance, it's appropriate. Yeah, that's not why the way it's written. I don't believe that. Let me, I also want to say, Tom, we'll, I mean, I, I look forward to working this out and having it not be a kind of sense of fun. But, when we were approached to create, to extend the existing historic district out around Hill by the I guess, previous developers, I'm not sure the history of it or whether they were current or previous developers, but the, the developers wanted the historic district to be extended there to gain the tax advantage that would accrue to them uh, by that um, designation. And there was, there were extensive heartfelt promises to abide by all the rules and regulations of the historic district and how advantageous that was and how, how, how august they were in, in wanting to follow the, all the restrictions of the historic district. Uh, that it was a very special thing that they recognized that it was not the same set of restrictions that would apply to the rest of the city. What I hear in your argument, as cogent as it is, is that this is that the standards of the zoning uh, for the part of the planning uh, board um, are, since they've approved the lighting, that that should be enough. And they're, they're, they're seer and, and, and capable uh, process covers most of the city, which is not in the historic district. So in this, and I hate to call it a lesser standard, but it is a more general standard than the historic, than that which applies in the historic district. So therefore it seems to me that, that it's not quite fair to want to get the tax advantages of the historic district to pledge adherence to the historic district when it's, when there's an economic advantage to doing so follow the guy follow the restrictions of the Mass Historic Commission to change the facade of the of the building even, not because it was mandatory, but because doing so would, would preserve the tax uh, advantages. Um, and then say to us, well I found a loophole or we abide we're, we're following this the, the, the town's general guidance about lighting and that should be enough for you guys. This is, it's either in the historic district or it's not. Now, we may, we may, um, you know, I, I don't know where the loophole comes down on this thing or where the tempest and teapot that comes down or where the, you know, this resolution is. We'll have to, you know, it's, it's not for me, it's for the commission to decide. But, um, but I do think that, I feel like I'm, I'm there's a push me, pull me thing going on uh, between what set of rules are supposed to be applying here, and and it, <coughs> it's uncomfortable. Um, so I'm, I I I do want to note on a, on a very practical level, and I mean, thank you for bringing it in, that you are allowed by right to have three, a little, uh, three of those big boxes on on the building. I hope to, I'm glad to see you taking at least one down. <laughs> I would object to you taking all three down. Uh, well, there's so actually more than that, it's just one on every facade. <laughs> so it seems to me that, that you are already allowed three um, um, wall fixtures because they were pre-existing. Um, there's no question about you being allowed uh, sconces at doorways or, or light fixtures underneath the porticos, underneath porch roofs. I don't know the right term, pardon me. Um, so we're left with talking about the remainder 
remaining number of, of pictures and uh, their type, their, their number, their location, and I've been uh, talking about yeah. the other members. Can, yeah, just in terms of you know these and their specific locations, we didn't want to put the new fixtures up where these were because they made no sense whatsoever for the yeah, that. That I get. I think if you, if you move the location, that would probably so, be okay. You have three. If you want to have Right. Move it a little bit. I just felt like we're doing something that the geometry of the locations responded really well to the architecture of the building. It didn't take away from it. It wasn't random. It was very carefully conceived of and thought about and with the intent that it enhanced the architecture. Um, I, you know, I, it, it is, it does bother me a lot though that just because there's money involved, there seems to be some unwritten penalty. Um, every time this comes up that, oh, you did this because you had to get the tax credits, you had to get money. So the question has never been asked to Jim, would he have done the same exact thing regardless of tax credits or not if he had had the money to do it? I, mean, I think it, it, it's, it's a little disingenuous to bring money into this and say, you're only following these guidelines because you're getting the money. And no, you know, no, no, and it's not hardly disingenuous. That was exactly that was exactly the line of reasoning that was presented to this commission as to the as to the reason for the desire of the developers to to get the um, historic district put onto Round Hill. That was exactly the rationale that was explicitly given to us. So don't tell me that we are disingenuous because that's literally what the way it was sold to us. Okay. That they, they, okay, I get it. But we are following the National Trust guidelines, though. The, the, the bottom line is we're following the guidelines. Otherwise, we wouldn't get the money. And But, you know, we're following the guidelines. And, and it just seems like to me, if something is exempt from your guidelines, it should be exempt. It shouldn't be, like, sort of exempt. So only when we decide it's exempt or not. It, it's, written in there three different times. No it's not a loophole. This is like written down. <laughs> um, and it, it was not, uh, 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 Sarah's comment, I repeat, was that this was not, this lighting, this lighting scheme was not part of the original plan. It was presented to us after the fact, in fact, after, it was presented to us after the holes had already been, the big clunky four inch holes had already been drilled to the facade right. of the building. Uh, so it, this was not part of the original design, and and as such, it does come under uh, our our. But parts of it's part of your overall project. It is part of well, something. Well, uh, under that line of reasoning, if it was an independent project, not a part of the original, then it would really be exempted because it it is an independent project. But I, it isn't. That, that's a that's a made up story on my part. It is a part of the entire thing, and regularly projects go through amendment phases where something you didn't think about or some improvement or something came up, you make an amendment. And you can also understand from the position of a historic district commission, we can't be railroaded into approving what might do that. We can't be asked to approve, strangely have to approve uh, changes which were not part of the original I know. approved plan. Because who's no telling what somebody comes and up I, with? After I, the I fact. hoped that we had gotten over that hurdle with the, our last two and a half hour meeting. I, I hoped we were beyond the punishment phase of <laughs> me not doing the right thing. Um, but I'm not. I'm not chastising <laughs> you personally. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Well, you have to forgive me, Tom. I wasn't at the last meeting. So, how many holes have already been? Uh, and what was the thinking? What was the thinking? Before talking to the well, the thinking was that um, I had talked to our historic consultant mm -hmm. uh, who's managing the tax credits, and he, that's his job, the historic right. consultant. I ran it by him, I showed him the fixtures. He said, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. And I said, we did it on the last project, and Mass Historic approved it. He said, yes, they approved it. They never said anything. So you should be good to go on this. So I made a terrible mistake not coming before you before that, uh, while that was all happening. Mm -hmm. I, I just sort of 
thought, okay, we've got the higher authority, as it is, uh, approval, and that we should be okay. That was a very bad mistake on my part to do that. And I never did it intentionally, because I tried to get approvals from at the state level before we did anything. So it was just an oversight on my part that I didn't come before you guys. And at what point in this did uh, were the lights originally motion sensing? You said that came in more recently. Well, the, uh, what the planning board originally approved, um, we didn't have any wall-mounted lights on the building. We were doing almost all of our lighting with pole lights. And um, so they said, well, you, all your pole lights have to turn off at 9 o'clock. And you can, leave, you can have motion sensor activated wall lights. And I said, well, we don't have any wall lights. And, and, and that discussion went nowhere with the planning department. So once we were not allowed to have any pole lights on, that meant we had no lights on the building at all. So I had to come, I had to make some changes. I had to come back before the, you guys, Mass Historic Planning Department, you know, for this amendment to introduce wall lights. And at what point was that? Well, December. yeah, that's, I think when they drilled some holes, I talked to our store consultant a month prior to that. So. So definitely I made a mistake not coming to you, assuming that my, well just forgetting, you know, not intentional. Just remember, I can't talk about anything with this mm -hmm. conflict of interest. I understand. Okay. Free warning. Thank you. Sorry. Other comments? Questions? Um, um, the other thing that you, that you missed you know, we had talked about the alternative to wall-mounted lights, mm -hmm. which would be bollards right. along the pathway. Right. Um, and, you know, which wouldn't interfere with the architectural integrity of the building at all. Um, and Martha was thinking, Martha, who, Martha, whose opinion I respect, said that she didn't think that the bollards along the pathway would be such a great idea because the pathway is nothing that really should be highlighted. Um, it wasn't a wonderful feature of the, of the grounds. Um, and, and so that was the other, that was the other alternative that didn't see, you know, that is still an alternative, I guess, to the wall, to wall mounting. Um, yeah, we've been trying to think of what the alternatives are. We can't have any up lights. Um, just not a lot, other than bollards. There's just not other ways of doing this, other than pole lights, but we're not going to do pole lights out there because they have to be turned off at you know, night. Mm -hmm. Well, I. Um, in my opinion, uh, from last meeting, just hasn't changed. I mean, I, I fully um, uh, understand the care that Tom took to devise a system here, which I think is really going to enhance this building. And you know, we historic preservation always isn't about bringing things back to a date um, when a building was built or. Um, when it didn't have ivy on it, I don't know. It, it you know, historic preservation, I think, had, has to be interpreted in a flexible way. Um, we're trying to make it usable for contemporary and future. And sometimes that means making sensitive alterations that may appear, you know, not 19th century, but um, are contemporary, but complement. And I think that's what Tom did. And I. You know, went back and looked at the design standards that I was involved in creating. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and was too. We were both on the historic district commission at the time when it was separate from this entity, mm -hmm. and we we worked for this on this for years, and I think came up with a very sensitive set of guidelines that does um, that do include all of the items that um, we cannot uh, judge, meaning. Um, 
the motion sensors and so forth that we're not able to um, conflict with New Hampshire zoning. And I think that Tom has done a really great job of meeting all of these standards that were laid out really carefully back in 2010. And the only thing I could see on here that we could possibly argue was that we, we did not want to um, have wall washing, but I don't consider these lights wall washing. I mean, they are really not. There's a little bit of light reflected in spots on the building wall, but it's mostly directed at the walkways below. So um, they're small. They're um, I find them very intrusive. I, I just I think it's a very sensitive um, approach to eliminating a historic building. Um, you know, really uh, bringing the lighting into scale, and I think it will improve the overall look of, of the site. And the, uh, other comments? Yes. I actually have three questions. One is, what is the hole? that was drilled, I think, at, towards the end of December, that is um, to the east of the doorway in the south side. Is um, that going to be a was that, fixture there, box? Was there one that was like right in here? Is that where you're talking about? Well, I don't, um, it's on the well, south side. Oh, okay. The easternmost right. doorway. There were a couple of things that were drilled in um, in the last month that were required fire alarm devices because I, I mean, we caught it immediately I was aghast that they were drilling any holes in the building um, and I went and I asked and they're, they're required code required fire alarm devices okay but it won't be a light no okay and another question um, what is the purpose of the pole light along Round Hill Road it looks as if it is um, and it's towards the curb and it would if it, there were a path it would lead to that main entrance on Mount Hill Road. I'm not sure. Do you guys know which one? I think I yeah I, I wasn't part of the project um, when there was a walkway there but I believe there, there was a walkway. Um, oh. oh. It's, Okay. You can probably point it out in that story. Oh, there's one light, pole light that's, oh, sorry, about next to a handicap ramp. Um, we did a new handicap ramp. It's think, not that close to the building. Yeah, let, I, let me see if um, I can look at that one that you're talking about. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, is it, here's the front of the building. Here's the round hill. Your house is here. Mm -hmm. Right around in here? Is that or if, no, it's closer to our house. Down here. Um, so I'm, I'm not aware of anybody. I don't Maybe think it's ever here. been turned on, but oh. it is there. Um, okay, where is the. Your house is right there. Uh, here's the. So I would say it's about there. Um, you can't no, get a dip no. remote if it's an existing fixture. No, and it, no, it's new. It's new? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Man. So anyway, I wondered what that is all about, uh, be, especially because it is in between two street lights and is directly across from those blazing globes on the apartments. Oh, the so, original globes. So um, I don't know why you need it. I don't no, there, there is no new pole light on front anywhere in that front of the property. I don't think it's ever been there. Do you know which we, we, one I'm talking about? I do, and I, it's, it's, um, I believe that was the light that eliminated the old sidewalk that has been moved, and that I think that fixed that pole probably is still there. But we're, there's been no new pole lights added to the but front. But someone has put a, the, the lantern top on it. It is new. It was Which side is it? It's on. It's on. The, it is it's on the west side of the street. Yes. Well, and it's it never been illuminated, but it is there. Is it the public right of way? It probably would be in the right of way. So maybe the city. Um, Light up the city. Anyway, <coughs> I don't yeah. know what its function is, um, but it did make me think 
why wouldn't you put similar lights, I mean, it's not an unattractive light, rather than those lights that are streaming down the building, you know, in, well, around the... Um, that's what kind of got us into this whole predicament was I originally had some pole lights around the building, and then the planning board said they all have to be off at 9 o'clock. So we had no way of illuminating the perimeter of the building. See, I think that would make much more sense. I mean, I don't understand, is there some ordinance that says you have to illuminate every inch of those walkways? No, but there's a, a real liability issue to having dark sidewalks around the building. Okay. Is this, you know. But I mean, you, <clears throat> if you had those pole lights and that light is not unattractive and it's definitely new, um, well, we were told we couldn't do that by the city, so we never looked back. We just, they okay. just told us that. I don't, actually, I don't remember that. I know that you had to uh, turn off the lights. In fact, um, I remember there were lights on um, what is Weir House, and then became something else that would shine into our window, bounce off the roof and into a window, and oh no, those could stay. And I'm glad you've turned them off, because they were horrible. All right, those whole yes. lights along the roadway next to No, year. they were actually on the building. Oh, oh yeah, like and these guys. Yes, yeah. they were horrible. Right. Um, so I'm glad they're gone. Um, but, and I have another question. Um, you said all these restrictions were imposed, yet at the time of the um, site plan hearing back in 2016, um, there was an ordinance that required a buffer between an office park and a residence. You got that removed, and that I mean, probably would be a lot happier if there were a buffer, and you wouldn't have me looking over there all the time and the complaining. That's a zoning. And I think that's, that's business park zoning and residential. This isn't zoning. I beg your pardon? It, that would be business park zoning. So between the business park zoning district and a residential district, but this isn't zoned business park. Well, actually, initially, Carolyn was receptive to the idea. And then all of a sudden it went because we wouldn't have to look at the lights. That, that's we, something that would be under the planning board's jurisdiction. Right. That's not something the historic commission would I understand that. I understand that. But you were given the benefit of the doubt there. Well, we are and making a, a big effort to try to keep these lights from okay. shining on you. I mean, I think you'll get more light coming out of a window than you will little pictures. Well, I would hope. Mm -hmm. um, I also now wonder about these events that are going to be there. Will we have to endure those as well? That's also not something that would be under the historic commission's jurisdiction. Okay, well, um, anyway, of anything that would be a buffer between us and the development would be much appreciated. And I think you would benefit it, benefit from it as well as we. Thank you. Sarah, let me ask a procedural question. Um, with Emily recusing herself, my question is if four people voted and, and approval requires four votes. It would be a majority of the commission. Be a majority of the commission, so that would be four. Okay. So um, we're conducting a hearing right now. We're not necessarily conducting um, a final vote. I, Tom, I don't want to put you in, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the owners into, um, I'm trying to be extremely I ethical, ethically yeah, for you. Uh, and, and that is that if we were to take a vote this moment, because of Emily's necessary recusal, um, and if I don't support it, but three others do, then you're turned down. And I don't want to do that to you, because it's not your fault that somebody else has a you know, uh, it can't be here this evening. Um, I would rather that you win this current square if that's where you're going to rather be turned down simply because of one person. Um, so um, I don't know how the, whether the, how the rest of the board feel like that, whether you are insistent on calling a vote tonight or whether you would like to call a vote uh, for the next session. I would lean toward having more members here to vote. I think it was a clear. We have two members who were not here uh, who would ordinarily be here. 
but I also have respect for the amount of time we spent on Tim extended here. It is yes, what it is. So oh, I mean, there is. I feel bad for the grosses having to come to all these meetings. You, 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 I, I think the commission agreed with me that they, you have, by right, you have the right to put up three um, smaller replacements from these monsters that, that you um, were strong enough to bring in. Um, so um, there's that, and certainly for all the portico and um, and, and, and door sconce lighting is, is uh, I think, approvable by the, the commission. The, the question remains of the remaining number of, of, uh, of wall fixtures. Um, I remain convinced that they're not wall washing fixtures and they don't seem to be they are primarily to um, um, the sidewalks. I, I, I continue to be concerned about the issue of uh, the following the, the historic commission guidelines or, or not uh, as, as, as conditions change um, and interests change. Um, so we can, which, what's your pleasure? Or, or, the, or the applicant's well, pleasure? Do you want, you want to vote tonight? Sure. Or? Do you give me a fair shake? The, the question time? is no approval tonight. <laughs> we can hold or, off on or, the vote. Or wait to, for okay. more members and a possible approval. Because tonight is guaranteed to be no approval, it seems. I think it, I'm not sure what the vote would be, but I, just speaking for myself, I think it would nix a vote. Right. And, but I don't want to do that to you or the applicant because you put so much effort into this. I would rather give um, a fair shake. Yeah, we and I, and I would ask uh, Sarah to fairly and completely represent the, the, the scope of the issue and, and uh, hope you wouldn't mind if if uh, new members who could be here tonight could at least inform themselves uh, with Sarah of, of the, <coughs> the facts of the matter. Well, I think Would, it's recorded, right? Is it recorded? It's recorded and, and hopefully <laughs> they watch that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I didn't come here for a guaranteed disapproval for now, so it would be nice to have a proper chance at approval. The, the commission has 30 days to issue a certificate of appropriateness. appropriateness. We will not meet again within 30 days unless okay. we schedule a special meeting. So we'll have, we'll have the other members review the tape? No, no I'm, I'm saying that if we don't issue a certificate of appropriateness within 30 days of tonight, it's, con it's, it's a constructive approval, essentially. It's automatic, so we have to schedule a special meeting. I think we should we'll schedule have a special meeting. meeting. I do. I think that this needs to be resolved. Um, with all members present, I would advocate for that. But there's no guarantee that we would get enough yeah. no. members. To be I'm just trying to give them a fair shake, though. Can I ask you another question? So all of these lights are going to be motion activated. They're not just going to come on and stay on all night. Correct. 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 And if one motion detector is activated. It's only activated along that the only it's only activated where it's needed. It's not doesn't it That's doesn't automatically yeah. come on around all the Yeah, the whole building does doesn't light up. It's, it's like, it's I think um like one facade would come on mm -hmm. because the pathway runs in front of that facade. Okay. All right. So really if people are just using the exit closest to the parking lot, then it's conceivable, it's possible that all the other lights will just stay off all night. That's correct. If no one else is, is using other exits. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why aren't there the lights on the back towards the other building? Uh, we do have lights back there on the addition of the, what, what do you mean? I was looking at, this, at the um, elevation that you sent. Yeah. And all of the lights seem to be on the street side or the two sort of wrapping around the ends of the street uh, side. No, we have quite a few lights on the back on the addition. Okay. Um, more than on the front. Uh, there, on the back there is a, a patio kind of thing. Can you front? Oh, yeah, so so you know, there's the outdoor patio right here. So in this little notch is kind of an outdoor space. It's going to be a very private shield. All the neighbors are shielded. So there are the similar little, little um, light back there? They're a light that, um, it's not that light. It, it's a light that um, and illuminates a little bit more space. And uh, the, yeah, they're, uh, so they're serving a different purpose. They're lighting 
they're lower because they're lighting a patio right in front of a adjacent to the building. So there's no landscaping to project beyond. So we, we put them lower. Uh, they're a different light fixture because they're eliminating the septal patio. Um, so yeah, here's a so you can see that the W4s are the round one. The W2s are the, the little brick. These W5s, they're very different light. They're like a cylinder that's mounted mm -hmm. close to the ground because these are on a roof deck and then these are next to this outdoor patio. So we've, we've got you know lights around here and at the entry and then the canopy right here has lights recessed up into it. So there's far more fixtures there than there are in the other parts of the building. What do the lights on the roof do? What, what, what do they do? Lights um, well, it's a, it's a patio. It's oh, an outdoor patio. It's a patio. Yeah. So it's only being, it's the lights, you said that in your memo, that they're only, they would only come on when people would Yeah, use it's their control by switch. switch, yeah. So, it, yeah, it's, and it's, you know, it's very... So what about, what about walkway lights? I mean, the rationale for the lights that put all the W4 on, on the ground or what side? Well, we, we, we would have pole lights up here. So, oh, okay. um, and then, then we've got these lights here I that see. are motion sensor. So you do, I, I didn't know you had pole lights. Yeah. Before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different because we have a lot more, uh, you know, we've got, you know, pole lights there and there. It's not a huge amount, but, but, but we are eliminating the walkway here and here with, with wall sconces on the building, but just a little bit different light than what we're using. I mean, it seems to me that, again, looking at the existing conditions plan, that there's, an over, there's a shift in light um, from one side of the building to the other. And it feels also to me like it's a reduction um, than what's, from what's there now, or what has been there, I guess, in, in the past. So, but again, that's not really our, it's not our purview. Yeah, well, you can see. I mean, these green dots are where all those fixtures that's are. That's what I mean. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those around so the So you're building. concentrating it more on the north side of the building right. um, and removing a lot from the south. And then they were here and here. So, yes. <coughs> okay, can I make a, just a simple proposal that we say to what I've already said, and that is that we, um, indicate to the petitioner that, that the any lighting immediately surrounding the doorways is allowed by right and then any of the, the three wall mounted fixtures um, in the round hill area um, to be selectable by the, by the petitioner are allowed by right since there are already the three of these um, wall packs on that, on that uh, facade. Um, and that gives you at least something that is, uh, I think, fair and, and not controversial. Um, and uh, then we will um, assure that there's a fair presentation to our missing members about this. Uh, and, and hopefully, uh, if, if you're available to answer questions, I'd be happy to have them talk to you yeah, to, 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 um, to get a, a fair um, impression. Um, but uh, so the motion would be to allow three uh, replacement of three wall packs and and uh, the placement of, or the uh, the use of uh, uh, portico and, and door sconce uh, fixtures uh, throughout the building. Is that so? Can I just motion? Just clarification. No. Um, <laughs> so no. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I, you're actually we're suggesting we vote on that. I, I would like to give them what's non-controversial. This would be the last time. Okay. In other words, the three, replacement of the three wall packs is not controversial. That's a lot by right. Well, that's well, that's by right. It does, you don't need to do that. If it, if it doesn't require review, you don't need to do that. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't include that anyway because if Tom's left with that, what's he going to do? Put up 
I don't know. Three more wall back? Well, they're not allowed. But, you know, three more, three of these random lights on. I mean, it would be a terrible mistake. But anyway. Okay. Okay. I, I think at this Go point, you, you should either vote to issue or deny a certificate of appropriateness or t to continue the hearing. And we can't do a time or date certain because we don't know when that is. We'll have to re Okay, so we, so I would move Can we continue the hearing and then have additional people? Uh, if Barbara or Craig would be willing to watch the video of this meeting and certify that they did so, they would be able to vote. And how would we vote? Uh, at, you know, not a, not convene, but have a... No, you, you would have to, yeah. have to yeah. convene. Yeah. Okay. So I would move that that's, that we have a continuation of the hearing, request that Barbara and Craig um, look at the, 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 the film, video. And um, we have to reconvene and have a, another vote on this. Do a second. Second. Discussion. Within 30 days so that we can resolve this before the time is up. As a move. Second, that's okay with you? Yes, ma'am. Right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Let's do that. And one of the For original fixtures, so that must be the one you're talking yeah. about. They look the one I only saw one, and it doesn't look new. Uh, yeah, I, I'll look at it next time I'm yeah, there. But um, for us to have put in a new picture, we would have had to dug a trench out there and lay wire into it. Well, how come I suddenly saw it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it would help if the, the exemptions were made written down to be not exemptions <laughs> under certain circumstances. We will take that up. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. And I, I apologize to you for the for the delay. If you'd like to join us up here, yeah, uh, that'd be great. And uh, thank you for having us tonight. No, thank you for being here. And, I'm uh, sure it's a fairly short notice. So you guys can bear with me uh, uh, a little bit. I, I hope to get you guys something to review. I did bring you things to look it, at. It's been brief, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to bring you over some drawings and show you some of the original Thank drawings you. and show you the things we've enhanced okay. to try to bring some of the details in the old house. Okay. So, um, I'm going to find a spot to roll out the big guys here. Yes, I'm worried about lighting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Uh, but, um, but what we did is, um, let's start on this side. And what we want to do was to bring some elements of the old house in the way that we discussed in the last meeting. We want one of the, the stick frame uh, decorative detail. Um, we felt like we could bring that into the house without really affecting 
um, the architecture, but it meant that we needed to do a few different things. And so what we did on the Finn Street side was we, we added the same decorative element, but we band, we brought our banding and our cornice all the way around, which gave some separation, um, which was some of, some of the banding of the original house that happened. We also enhanced the details around the porch to reflect the, the gable detail into the porch detail. You'll have to excuse some of the, the crude overlay, you know, but once we get, you know, to a point where we've got this committee happy, obviously we'll bring the um, port back in to do some, you know, um, final cleanup of these details to go to permanent So one of the other issues that we that we saw that we had was on the side of the building there was sort of this this element here that didn't work and so we were able to shift the windows in make it feel more balanced get the shutters back in and enhance the entrance of the house and to pull some of that architecture from the front of the house into the side of the house as well this will be a see-through, so you will have platforms behind there, and it'll have the same effect as the um, six-aisle trim, where you can see through it and see the siding behind it. Um, so we wanted to deal with features on, on, on those three sides of the house, and um, and, and, and enhance those, those features of the house. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Which one is the newer version of it? This, this here, yeah. So we, we shifted our windows, um, which I think still look symmetrical and even on the building. They worked in the interior design and the exterior of the design as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so we wanted to pull some of those elements into the, into the new building, which I think um, um, will enhance quite a bit the um, thin side, obviously getting rid of some sort of a medallion here, but bringing the trim down, I think it makes the building mm -hmm. feel a little more feel, yeah. filled out and, and, um, and brings back some of those features from the old house. This is a, it's a big improvement. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the flexibility. Thank you. Um, um, trying to listen to the neighbors to it, one of the things. Um, I think we can accomplish some of their concerns too without a lot of a lot of change. One of the concerns was the the, the massing of, of the house. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was one neighbor. Yeah. It was one neighbor. one neighbor. That it was only one neighbor that said that, and you spoke to that neighbor afterwards. Okay. And went through the actual plans, and you showed her the original on top of this one, and showed her that it the, the footprints the, are almost identical. The footprints are almost identical, and she walked away feeling completely satisfied. Um, was my impression from the conversation. One, okay, one of the one of the um, the, the features of, of the existing design compared to the existing house is that the current house has several. Um, it's, a fractured it's, it's more of a fractured right. Yeah. Right. And, and this, yeah. um, this, um, this building, the house, the, the, the primary occupancy is from here over. And this, if I understand correctly, is a sort of a study open area and, a, and the garage mm -hmm. um, there. And what architects sometimes do is create a small break in the roof. In the, the roof line to sort of delineate that there's a, a distinction mm -hmm. rather than creating one long box. Right. So is, I don't know, is that possible to consider or not? So the, the reason, and so um, some I think what you're feeling is is just the switch from the Victorian to the colonial, which we didn't right click. I think of colonials as being a little stately. It kind of has that, that sort of a effect, maybe a little monotonous. They're, they're rectangles, um, which we didn't anticipate would be an issue. That we were picking very traditional New England architecture that would that would fit in, but the the design of the house, the reason the that it's not symmetric, um, that the doorway isn't, we would have preferred visually the doorway nice and in the middle, like a you know like that father's bride house um, kind of effect. Um, so that the garage and the front entrance feed into a room that's designed for transfers for my mom, um, and so. 
uh, those entrances, that room is, is just designed for her condition, the, the wheelchair to the stretcher. So we can't bring the garage around the back um, or it has to feed into that room. Wasn't, yeah, actually it wasn't on truck finger. I wasn't yeah. really even implying any major structural changes to the minor, um, uh, 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 almost a superficial just a break in the, keep every, all the rooms exactly where they are. Okay. And, and they use, but have there be just a, a small break in the roof line so as to distinguish that there is sort of two parts to the building, if you will, or, or um, uh, just a, a drop or a, 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 a jog or something like that. But that's just, I'm just speaking as an individual. But it's just, it's a very, very long single um, spine, if you will, um, that, that's atypical of buildings of that age, which we usually sort of add on to. And so one of the, currently, I wouldn't ask you to replicate what you currently have, which is about three or four different, different. Um, yeah, it was added on to at multiple. Times. Right, yeah. and so the general the architect added on they sort of they they made right. that distinction. I understand what you're so if we had the roof a foot higher in the Something section, like that, yeah. I, I I mean I just don't know. That sounds like it would add some significant. Cost. I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know there there would be you know part of you know obviously it's part of this and just so you where so the the idea is actually we're going to be bringing this up. So that there is accessibility in here and we have an accessible bathroom on the first floor so that's the part of having the the, the flow so that designed for my mom so you have our full ready. support and sympathy okay. for that issue that's okay. not a quick even question important. so um so the question is can we you know can we um you know is there a limit is, is there a way is that we can get division of, of the house plane there and the answer is you know there are ways to do it mm -hmm. um, you know and we, we want to find a way that was was not um, a, you know a big added expense um, no problem um, yeah um, and I don't even know if I'm speaking for the whole, whole yeah. committee but I mean that was definitely the first thing that struck me and also something that a neighbor mentioned after the meeting to us was that that was the biggest concern it was sort of a, a, an almost barracks like look to the sure. side and it might be more dramatic in an architectural drawing which is very uniform mm -hmm. than it would be actually in the neighborhood uh, i mean i will that say that that's the warfield side it's right. not like from a historic perspective the side that you see, the side with those details that you liked, that was on the, the fin side. And so concerned with any use from any public way. Right. So the Warfield Street side is as is is important at, is as important as the Fin Street side. Um, because it's a it's a public way and that's what people see. And there are neighbors across the street on Warfield as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Could you put you? Could you just think about that? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a job in the foundation. Yeah. We certainly don't want to see a change in in grade because, of, for practical reasons, right. there's right. Right. that are very very compelling. And, um, it, and it is nice to have a continuous roof line, less risk for leaks and things. I mean, but that was. Thank you. It would look more colonial if that's the intent to to actually break it a little bit. Because I think no, no, said, I, I think I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'd rather. We oh, really set. I yeah, no. we, I mean, we we set this up with a lot of sort of structural. We, we really wanted to protect. There's a lot of water in that area. There's a, we just really wanted it, and it does make it more structurally sound in a lot of ways to have that. Just not have a lot of extra jogs. Um, so so one of the yeah. difficulties is everywhere you say gray here, that's a sheer wall system, right? And and so by. <sighs> In order to, to narrow that up, um, what ends up happening is we eliminate wall here, which then becomes very difficult to to get the sheer wall there. And the idea of having a spot for Jaya, Simon, and her parents to be able to have a vehicle was why that was designed that way. I think that I think that you could take this as being very monolithic but what you're not getting is you're not getting this you're not getting of the texture of the house and you know, we have pediment trims we have a, you know a, oh, a, a porch that comes out 
and those things are going to give some texture back and forth to the house. This piece being enlarged is greatly going to break that plane up. It's hard to see it in 3D, uh, you know, not in 3D, but um, I think when you see, you know, the textures of the, mm -hmm. the pediments, yeah. um, some, you know, and you start to see that, and so this is even the, this is actually the downsized version of it. So this is going to be a much more prominent piece. It's going to break up the middle of that that plane on morphium a lot. Um, so we get we get back into all these sort of structural details with how do we maintain accessibility for three cars mm -hmm. and narrow up that garage with having the sheer wall issues we have on the lower part of the My car. last question in that regard is if it would be possible to keep the entire foundation exactly the way it is, keep grade exactly the way what would you think about this is the ceiling truss system, right? This is. Okay. Yes. Would, if a, a slightly shallower angle on the truss would, would do the same thing. Is that is that inappropriate? It, it is because what ends up happening is that we we create these finite points. Okay. So you know it, it, it just isn't from a from a water perspective. It's not great for the for the roof okay. system. All right. Because it's not like we're right. dropping the whole roof system down, and we have this clean plane that we can flash really well. Okay. We've got we're creating sort of a okay. you know, a driving point. Last last question. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll pass on any further questions. But last question I have: there's, there's currently a lovely front porch that that, that faces the street as, as many houses do in the in the neighborhood. Um, that has those, those wonderful uh, sort of three bays of, with a perch um, on it. Have you considered? Um, no, culturally we don't do porches. Like my family, like we are, you know, our, our houses, and we originally, our original idea was actually to sort of recreate more Indian architecture, but we switched to the colonial because we, we thought, we thought we that's what you folks would okay. like. Um, Good we don't, so, so culturally women are not supposed to be sitting outside, and so my mom feels very uncomfortable with any um, house. They used to have courtyards, and yes. that's because it's inside the, the my, my grandson was going to be sure sitting and listening to that one. Oh, yeah. Um, um, so, so it just culturally it just doesn't, and that's why there's no porches on there, which I realize is unusual for any house in this in this area to just not have any porch. We thought we thought that widening that entrance on the Warfield Street would would be somewhat of a compromise, where it's just an entrance and, and not not a porch. Thank you. The, the other the other piece from that too is that because it's not going to be used. I mean, we understand that it's an architectural feature, but porches are not inexpensive. Um, you know, porches are one of the more expensive details you can have on a house. And why we wanted to make the more prominent entry larger uh, was, you know, do you want to build a $35,000 porch that no one's going to Oh use and can we pull some architectural features into the front, make it more aesthetically pleasing, but not make a big porch at the end. Just these changes you were estimating was about close to ten to fifteen thousand yeah, dollars. Just the more, changes more, that we did more on the line of fifteen thousand mm dollars -hmm. to to enhance the porches and the trims. Okay. You also Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. I did, I did. This is my first meeting, so I'm going to let me know if she's the only architect in the, in the group of us. Um, I thought I said to me, it, the front pediment is out of proportion historically. The columns are much too wide. And there's something that's off historically proportion. There could be a solution. Am I allowed to give that? Okay, I'm not sure. We're, we're not, basically, we're, we would like to help the petitioners move forward with their project. I, yeah. I think you're held up by the, the triangular pediment in the entry, and if you went to a shed porch, it'd be less expensive and be more in proportion to the rest of the facade. But doesn't that let snow and water sit on top? Um, you could even go flat and have a hip roof. You can put rain diverters. You can put your architect and help you with those things. But I think it's I'm, just. I'm, I'm actually the builder. The oh, okay. Is, well, the, the, so just because you are right, there are proportion issues there. Yes. It's just that we need definitive direction before we go back to the architect at $150 an hour. 
to get these things proportioned okay. correctly. And but okay. but as you can understand, to go through it and not know that we're on the path with you guys would not be advantageous. Exactly. I mean, thank you. That's exactly yeah. the path that we would like to have with you. Yeah. Uh, is is this cooperative, open, mm -hmm. and and dialogue path so that you don't have a. I hope they like this. I hope they like this kind of right. moment. We right. that we don't want to waste your money. Right. Okay. So. So I, 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 agree, I, I agree with you that there is something wrong with that, but it's intended to to do some of the things that we were, you know, directed by the committee to do, which is to pull in some of the details from the house, yeah. enhance some of the texture of the house, and um, but then, you know, obviously, we well, you've made really good faith changes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. What would you What would you do by way of guidance? Um. There, this is, it's too wide, the columns are too big, so I would go with a shed uh, roof. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to get a longer, it's going to accentuate their... A shed the, roof, how long? Um, I mean, it, it's even going to, just between you, it's almost right here. <laughs> um, I would have to sketch it out. Uh, okay, so that, that just just to give you the background, yeah. one of the things that, that, that the family was trying to do and appreciate that was replicate the wonderful uh, kind of Queen Anne? It's not the appropriate application for that okay. detailing. Um, this, it is very colonial. Um, I think on this facade it works, but it, you are correct and in, historically it would, you would have bump outs and the roof would go down and create these divisions, but for this monolithic piece you would never put something like that. But I mean, we yeah, we were sort of trying to figure out how yeah. to make our colonial look more Victorian because we thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> um, so there is there is I, one colonial in your neighborhood right around the corner on yeah. State Street. Um, so, but it's it's pretty blank. I mean, it's an old uh, sort yeah. of 1760s looking yeah. looking uh, building. The rest of them yeah. are the nice uh, 1880s. Could you maybe draw? Because I think we're having and my concern. Yeah. Really I, I could try the picture. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, that, that'll work there's too. A, I can just look at it. Um, or, or, yeah, sketch it. Um, it's easier if I talk amongst yourselves. It's fine, because I don't know why no, I assume that I, I know, I mean, I, I know you're looking for, a, like, basically a federal colonial porch. Or even more like a Victorian farmhouse would be more appropriate. This is a mix between two things that aren't quite working. We We tried a three bay with a with a hip on there, and it's, it's really awkward. Um, it needs to probably be a single bay. And the, the other consideration with the shed um, is when it does dump snow and water, it's dumping it right on your path to the house. You can do things to change it. Though. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but those are mitigating. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it, this, I mean, this sort of prevents the, the problem altogether. I mean, it, um, The problem right now is that it's, it, it is truly disproportionate. I'm, I'm aware of that. It needs to get a little narrower or it needs to be multi Do you just want it narrower? Is that what you want? Um, sorry, first meeting, so I'm not quite yeah. sure. <laughs> did, you, know, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you listen to the hearing that we were at? Yes, uh, last oh. time, no. Oh. So I'm new to this. So. No, no. Go but what, what, what she's saying, I'm just saying, would, I need to, um, Take away from this nice ringer, but would you want a, a grade level entrance to this front door for access? I mean, you were you're mentioning the, the, the problem access with that is that then we then we're bringing you know we're, we we have grade entrance from the garage. Ah, okay. And the problem, you know, we, we want the house also to be high up enough that you know we're only going to be eight inches of concrete. Oh, well, I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm not talking about lowering the house. Yeah, I'm talking about raising. Maybe the, the walkway. I didn't know what was We have it from the garage, yeah. um, from the wheelchair accessible van, and, okay. into the and I think it would make a, a, an actually a nicer looking approach. Your your call. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, thank I mean, you. Thank, no, no, thank you. Thank you for that. But we have something that can go over, you know, the steps if needed. But usually the entrance is going to be from the garage. And so that it's good. I don't get internet connection here, so you're going to have to deal with this. Um, if you went and did multiple. Smaller columns on either side, two okay. on either side, and it was longer and a shed roof that was horizontal. So I think it's going to look 
better and it's going to be cheaper. Um, is it is it is it the same issue with the snow and the ice? Well, it, I mean, obviously we can deal with water management. I think with the house, it has to be a reasonably shallow pitch because if it's fine. not, it's not going to look right either. It, it um, so it could be like a three, you know, a three pitch or something like that. And I think, you know, so I think that if we do a common truss, there is there is an economy to that. Um, what it won't do is it won't. What's going to what it's going to lack is um, any volume above the roof line, right? The roof line will sit a little bit lower. So we won't pull any, and I think that that's the one advantage to peak there is it does break up some of the roof line in the second floor, but, but yes, if it's a common truss, it's going to save on complexity. And the other thing too is you don't have to um, have the entrance onto the porch uh, you could come along the side of the house to get into it, so mm -hmm. it didn't. So you didn't have the problem of snow falling down onto the walkway. That's and, true. And, and That's think true. about the outdoor circulation anyway. I mean, yeah. Are you going to be really like? No, usually you're going to. If you're going to come to that, typically you would probably park. The, the furniture you're talking about that. is not flat. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Like like slightly, I, I guess I'm a little oh, worried because I'm picturing this big massive roof with all that snow dumping down on that flat roof with a three degree pitch and snow and water accumulating there and developing ice dams. The advice on the triangle was from our architect and he, he and so I don't know I don't know all the details but he was very much against the shed roof. I remember him saying that um, and it had something to do with snow and ice. I think your idea of it the approach could not be in the front but um, there's a historic precedence to have that so I mean, another way to look at it is, is that we see a lot of houses, old houses in, in, in Northampton that have clearly appurtenances of different eras uh, that, are, that are on them. Uh, houses that, I mean, a classic one you see is those, you know, that, that, that uh, Georgian, you know, the three over two houses, like the one right around the corner from you, right. might have a porch wrapped around it that was put in in Victorian days. Right. Um, right. And you have to kind of look at it to say, oh, well, wait, there's actually a 1750 uh, farmhouse under there. Um, this could be uh, a, um, uh, a big old colonial that had Victorian trim slapped onto it right. uh, later. And that, you know, it's actually very lovely and would remind the neighborhood of, of uh, other houses. So I, there's different ways of looking at it. I think, um, you know, it, I certainly agree it's not a colonial entrance. Right. But you'd have to um, sort of explain, maybe tell the story of what the house is. Yeah. This is this is it didn't originally have that, but the owners right. put it on in a way to because it was 1880 and everybody was doing that. Right. Um, and no, I mean that that's the story of how all our houses. I don't know. But I think also I think that if we do bring this, you know, we get you know, um, you know, fourth draws this, they're going to put it into proportion more. I don't know that that you know that that gable trim necessarily is appropriate there. I think that we could bring the crowns uh, that are drawn uh, around the cornice, and I think we could bring those crowns up over the gable, and and you know we'd still. I do believe that that, that trim, that stick style uh, Victorian trim, really belongs in the. It, it works on the gables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it works at that entrance. It was um, something we did because that was like the one feature of, that, of the house, like, so we thought we'd stick we're like, it in there. We're like, all right, we'll sneak it in there and, 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 and see if, you know, if, if they like that. And, and I, I agree, it, do, it doesn't look right there. It works on the larger gables. And yeah. I think that we could, you know, I think that we could proportion it that a little bit better. I do like the fact that it does bring some volume up into the second floor that a shed roof wouldn't. Um, but I also like the fact that if we have snow coming down on it, it's... I mean, it clearly that door needs protection from snow, and that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's a given. Uh, would there be anything to the notion of, of taking the current design of the front the front porch, um, which has a much, has a much, is, is sort of this, this it design, is, yes. yep. and then, and it has a lovely mm -hmm. archway Diminishing in size, so it's now a, a, a porch size. I mean, a, a, a portico area. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
and and sort of shifting that around to the um, to the new front door that's, that's on the side. I don't know if it's that's uh, just sort of taking. Yeah. You don't like that, or no? No, I thought wasn't that what we had originally? We we, we actually had drawn that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. We, we were concerned that you know. Okay. So we we actually had drawn uh, you know a three bay with uh, I don't a think hip that's, roof. I don't okay. think that's what you're saying, right? Like you're. Well, you know, there's a, if you were to take currently on the front of your house, there's a shed mm -hmm. um, roof. So, Do you mean on the Finn Street side or the, on the Finn Street, Finn Street on the side? Street side. And it has about three bays of. Oh, you're talking about the porch. The porch. But, yeah, it, yeah. but if you were to if you were to take it and sort of take off two of those bays. Yeah. So so that it's the size of. What you want? That's actually what I want. I think to that's, what, that's we're, what I, I think that's, that's what we're all talking about. That's what I want yes. to do. Actually, that's what I think that was what I originally wanted was yeah, to yeah. was to do the but preserve gable the archway, on, right? To put the gable on the gable, and then in the entrance, both on the fin and the Warfield side, try to replicate that that little thing on the on, yeah. the, on the original porch. Yeah. That, I mean, can we can we do that? Yeah, of course we can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I, I wonder, um, oh, you know, yes. yeah. That that would hit would work with all your water and everything right. that mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah, and it's just proportionate for the for the door, door, yeah. door space rather than a, a wide so, porch. So well, we, we can don't. we don't have to put the shed roof, right? We can still have the triangle to kind of make it look pretty in the front, and then still put that 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 thing oh. that you like. Um, I think that that porch is going to look a lot more appropriate with with a, a shed roof. I think that it's it, it, it may look too voluminous. Or you could go with a like really low hip roof on the side. Rubber yeah. roof at that point, and you put a copper metal edge on it, and it looks like a metal roof. I mean, I think I, th I think the shed roof might be a deal breaker for us. I, yeah. um, but I, but I can work with the we can work with the if you like the porch trim, we can definitely find a yeah, way to yeah. work that in there. The one the, I guess the one downside of a shed roof is. Uh, because I have one of a few places on my house, is that they do tend to drip right onto the steps. That's right. And if, yeah. if your gutters are not great, whereas a, mm -hmm. a, a gable is, yeah. tends to shed to the side. Uh, I think it'll look prettier too because the, that that um, the the front the Warfield side it's already got a roof that's slanting this yeah. way. Kind of what he said, it breaks up the the monotony to have a nice peak there, as opposed to another roof that kind of slants that way. I think it would probably be good to get. That you know the porch is the side of the porch. Um, and better. <laughs> Having said that, you know, uh, yeah, um, you know, obviously we, you know, we, we need to. We're trying to help you get to this. Yeah, we, right you now. know, we need okay, to, we need to find a, a, you want to move a forward. path to move to move forward. Yeah, um, we want to, you know, we we want to get, um, and again. This attempt was was me moving stuff around with Bluebeam because that was the limit of, of the software that I had to work with. Um, so I'm I've come, I'm amending PDFs, you know. We're um, we're, we're, we're totally working yeah. with you. Yep. I mean, our purview is to protect old buildings. And we don't want to put an eight-year-long thing. We're yeah. working very quickly with yeah. you, um, and and you're showing really good faith uh, changes here. That's nice. Um, other members' comments. No, I think, well, I think that putting that portico on the side with the arch, I think is a, you know, is a, is a good idea. Certainly a step in, you know, in the right direction. So, um, you know, I'm just going to need someone to give us a picture or a defined direction because we can't, we can't <coughs> in gray and yeah, conversation. So if there's pictures or, or something, you know, or if you will to sketch something up. I can't sketch. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, you see, I mean, I'm just marks. talking. You have marks. In general, I'm not easy. Are they, are they, um, can you use a whiteboard? Oh, no, not, I don't have a whiteboard. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. it'd be there forever. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I could try to draw something yeah. on paper and pass yeah, it down. Yeah, we'll have a little bit. of the entrances if we did something like this with the roof like this but then 
we replicated the trim that's wrapped now all the way around the house here and then did this this right here to um, to replicate this so that was so this trim, it's not on the house anymore, but it was on the original mm -hmm. one with the pictures, and then we wrapped that around the house, and if we did that, this is a terrible drawing, of course. Um, if we did that right here, kept that little triangle roof, um, and then put that trim from the original porch mm -hmm. back in there, and we can do that on both sides, on the left hand side and on the thin street side. Mm -hmm. So then, it would basically, we would have, so we wouldn't have the porch, but we would have that one bay in there that would look like this mm -hmm. triangle loop, and then we would stand on that, that side so to try to sort of make that thin street side should, you know, because, yeah, oh, see. Okay. Um, so that's what we Because this width hasn't changed really very much, so that thin street side would still look fairly similar to, yeah. to yeah. what it was before. Yeah. The board field is definitely the, the challenge. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 But I, I do think on a, on a two-dimensional drawing, it just looks like a big, long, very boring, you know, gray thing. What's your preference? Um, I, you know, I'm going to rebrand it. Actually, I do have a question, but maybe I should ask it after we're done talking. I'm really curious about what the traditional I'd love to know that too. Yeah, just, so um, we, yeah, yeah. because we, because our, <laughs> we were told that we'd be chased out of town. Like that whole phrase I, changed the character of the neighborhood, <laughs> right? Yes. Like that's what that meant to us. And so we said, okay, we'll do the, we'll do a colonial. What's more New England than a colonial? Yeah. 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 So can you just say, well, we should, we're not. <laughs> so it has like a lot of the, um, so you think of them as Middle Eastern, the, the arches, but they're sort of laced. They actually resemble co of Victorians more than, more than anything else. They, right. they, resemble, they resemble Victorians more than anything okay. else. Okay, so well, um, the English were there the, during the, the time Empress of, of India. Right. They, right. The, right. The, right. Right. right, that's right. That, so that's right. What I'm, that's what so I'm, Queen Victoria was the first Empress of India. And so a lot of that, what we think of as Victorians, they actually took some features mm -hmm. of Indian architecture and put them put yeah. them in their in their building. Yeah. So that could that could <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's neither here nor there. I'm gonna leave it so I'm intrigued by it. No, I really appreciate the the changes that gave Glenn to match more in style of the original I pr would personally, personally prefer a shed roof, but I understand all the challenges that you, that you have and your fears. It's New England winters. Um, it does seem more character with that shape, just to my instincts, but I'm not that. Um, so. I'm, I'm not in favor of the gable on the lawn. Um, I think it's out of proportion and out of proportion with the building and historic. You were sketching a gable on a shed. You can put a gable on a shed, but that's very colonial. That's not Victorian. Um, I have this image was something that was would relate better in my opinion. Like, um, detailing in the front, so it's flat, but it's got smaller scale, you have thing that is intricate, but you're really like replicating what it was on. The yeah, this looks lovely. I mean, would you be okay if it, it was just an entrance and then there was a little triangle on top? Just the snow issues. Um, I, as we stand, the under I don't think the snow issues that big of a deal. It's an unheated space below, and you can put the rain rivers, and uh, you can put it a gable end on that, but, um, and these can be hit. 
that there's sloping in all directions and you have a gutter around it so there would be no water coming out. I bet you the roof though is going like mm -hmm. that, not yeah, like, I, right, so that's Yeah, because I right that's because so we have we have a friend, uh, we we're up at his house in New Hampshire, the shed roof the snow dumps there and has continued look because it, it's the snow piles up two, three feet at the edge of this at, of the uh, uh, shed roof or right where it all dumps mm -hmm. and they have had multiple issues with flooding despite flashing and everything else mm -hmm. so I think that's so what you're um, saying is that flat roof might work on the thin street side because right. we have the triangle on top there and not that shed right. roof but it but on the warfield mm -hmm. side yeah, sure. yeah. I mean what if we did that what if we did that kind of roof on the thin street side and then kept our little because then it would the triangle I think break up the monotony of that roof downward sloping roof and not that some of the concerns about the, the ice and stuff wouldn't be there, but then on the Finn Street side, we can have that. I feel like that's the side that needs it the most. Um, yes, it from an aesthetic. Yes. So I'm struggling of what, where, if I truly feel that it's sure. more historically appropriate and look better, I, I say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. All right. Um, and and your feeling is you like to stick with the with the gable because it's on the no 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 we don't, need, we don't need to yeah. keep the gable we can change we can change the trim to resemble the porch they're talking about the roof the right roof. i think the roof is where we're still apart it's yeah. that we on the on the war field we're, we're very nervous about having a shed roof just because it's sure no i understand your point yeah. actually and, and your point but too that we're talking about something that's under the long plane of the roof right. rather than at the gable end of the roof that's, right. that's also right. uh, from a physics standpoint that I can see that right. right away. So if we were to, you can see in the upper corners here that there, you know, there's sort of, there's more of a colonial design, right, to the, to the original oh. porch that was there, right? And if we were to design it proportionally to that, so that um, a lot of times to break those up to make them look better, you'll have, if you stay to a smaller post, you'll have essentially, from both sides, you'll see two posts in the corner. Right, um, which is, you know, will give, it'll break up some of the, you know, right now those columns are way too big. They, they look heavy, they look bulky, they don't. And I think if, if we kept the proportion and we kept that side a colonial side, because we're bringing those, those gable elements into both gable sides of the house, it's still going to help break that space up. Um, I mean, we're trying now. What we're talking about doing is taking a, a you know, a, a Victorian porch and putting it on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that. I don't know that that you know, could just be a nice, ways, you know, yeah, you know, later. colonial but proportionate porch on that side, so that it looks like mm -hmm. you know, like it belongs there architecturally. We're sort of, I think we're getting lost in the fact that I've, I've, I've stretched some details no, we're from the front of the house to make them fit the porch and it just looks wrong. Mm -hmm. So then we're, instead of thinking about making it a colonial porch that sits there at appropriate, you know, an appropriate mm -hmm. scale and proportion to the house, I think that would change things drastically about how we, mm -hmm. how we see it right now. And uh, again, it's just limited software and sort of trying to react to, to some of the conversations we had last time. And we understand we're trying to just, um, yeah. we're trying to move quickly for you sure. to and, and, we, and also very uh, recognize that, that. We're, we are indeed trying to preserve some semblance of, of, um, of the neighborhood and you've done a good job with the, with the yeah, uh, archways um, and, uh, and yet uh, at the same time there was a there was a vernacular architecture to colonial houses that didn't always include big, big porches. And at the same time, in, in recognizing in, in intermediary years, often things were added onto those buildings. So um, it's, it ends up being sort of whatever looks good and yeah. your advice right. in, in yeah. that regard. Right. And yeah. so you end up with an <coughs> even more beautiful house. Um, um, I'm sorry, I was late to the show. Which one are you viewing as the front of your home? The Warfield side, oh, okay. the address is 43 Fence, so that's a fair question. But um, the Warfield side is, is yeah. Yeah. Um, So this this 
So <coughs> we'll work the work front, but it will no, will be an ancillary uh, That's right. The, the, so again, we deal with all kinds of things, and one of the things is um, the intended use of the house is to be from the Warfield side. Mm -hmm. The Finn side has to exist because there's a moratorium, right? We change the address, we can't get natural gas, right? And we want to use high efficiency boilers and we want to use <coughs> on demand. And we so change. and so as soon as we change the address, we are no longer grandfathered in the system. We are a new we are a new service, we are a new address and it and it's gone. Whatever it's like, yeah. Oh, it's brutal. And really all they want is their pipeline. So you have to have a door on the front. We have to have a front. We have to stay 43 feet. Okay. I should. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, but, but the <laughs> ping pong ball, I just get bounced around. <laughs> okay. Um. What if we ask the architect? To actually drive it to because it is difficult to judge without the correct proportions because yeah. um, I instantly go mm -hmm. to that it, to draw it with the correct dimensions and I think it'll look actually look very different. Yeah, cool. 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 Um, I think it's not a bad idea. <coughs> Would, um, I want to minimize the ping pong on okay. this. So no, 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 but we can do that. Um, can you talk to the architect or can how can we do this so that you don't get thrown back and forth? I. I I mean, I guess I would be concerned about being left out of that conversation. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you should be concerned. <laughs> yeah. um, but I guess I'm just trying to, if we can, I think our goal was to go back to the architect and, and bring you back the, the plans, but we didn't want to go back to the architect multiple times. So we just wanted to be yeah. confident yeah. We want to go back that we to the had a, that we, that we, um, just one more time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then you would come back to us. So, yeah, I mean, we are probably going to meet again. So you're looking for a directive to give your just tell right? tell us what will yeah. make you be able to sign off on this. Historically appropriate proportions to the Warsaw is it, is it, 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 it looks too big to you. Is that what um, you're saying? the columns are too big? Okay, you want the smaller. We, yeah, we know and it, and it, it's 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 spread out too far to. And so, would multiple smaller space. columns that would yes. work for you? Or okay. even if you want to use that column, then a slightly di different um, roof line because you have this very thin detailing. Mm -hmm. How it's drawn now with right. really big column. That's what turned me off to it. Got it. So okay. we just need to be consistent. So we can we can put yeah. daintier. If we can keep that roof line, we can put daintier multiple right. smaller multiple columns. Multiple ones. Yeah. Right. And there's many ways to do it. I think it. we're uh, more concerned with what's above than what's below. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That that would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, the roof line is stunted and accentuated by a detail that doesn't fit into the space. Like I'm trying. Yeah. yeah. Try to pull a detail and that doesn't doesn't proportionally fit that well. And even if they don't have, you don't want to spend the money to have them detail that a picture of what you would actually um, build. It's fine too. You can go to Pinterest and find a porch. Right. Okay. Oh, we could, I think you we, want us to do that. We could find something online and send it. I mean, that maybe. could resolve them from spending a lot of extra architecture fees. Um, you yeah, so you're yeah. happy with the thin street side the way it is drawn? Is that is that our understanding? And then it's the Warfield that it's better than the Warfield. No, no, no. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and then what you want on the Warfield side is slender columns. Well, it's just a, a more proportionate porch. I, I have trouble understanding what that means. So, <laughs> so I, I'm sure you do. But it, yeah. so slender. Do you want the whole thing taken in? No. It can be that same size. And that might be where you might need your architect yeah. to help okay. you. Um, is that you have two? You can go two ways. A larger, more um, more substantial porch to relate to the larger columns that are drawn there. Okay. Or multiple smaller columns to relate to the fine detailing of the gable side. Right. So there's two different things going okay. on. So you just have to pick one. And then do you want us to take the gable out of the? We don't love that gable on the on the on the entrance. I mean, we would. I would even be happier with just other kinds of detail, but if you, do you like it there or do you want us to take it out? It's it's fine, I understand your concern about the water and the ice and that's probably... Oh, I just meant the... You're just talking about the gable decoration. The gable, I'm sorry, the gable decoration. Yes? 
Yes. No, 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 the, the identical no, one. The identical one on the porch. I feel like the one up yeah. top does yeah. the job. necessary job. Okay. okay. I think the right. more field size is disproportionate. It's, it's too fussy. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. think yeah. you right. need it below, okay. personally. Yeah, okay. Um, in a Queen Anne, Victorian, yes, but everything else is very simple and it just seems a little. I'm going to use the word here. Disproportionate in, in detail as well. Right. Yep. That makes sense. I mean, there might be a good faith effort to try and replicate some of the features of the existing house because there was a there's a big um, transept that comes out here on the original house mm -hmm. with this up in it. Um, yep. And so uh, um, this would be the only appearance. But you're right, it's, it's not falling out. So is, is this something that, that you you and the builder could work out? I don't know how much that is. Yeah, I think that would be You're definitely wearing colonial then, but yes, that's beautiful. Okay, so we need the right amount of detail and proportion of column. Okay, so, so if we put that on that house, that would satisfy. You. Now you're now you're colonial now. <laughs> um, colonial on one side. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I, guess I, I guess it, it wasn't colonial. But prior to 37 wasn't everything pretty much colonial or? 1937. Or 1837. 1837. Well, just Georgian, just different. Um, how is Georgian, Georgian different from colonial? I'm sorry, what was happening? Yeah. Well, prior to 1837, what was the predominant? It's a big touch phrase right. for a bunch of different styles. Right. I'm not wrong about that. I think so. Yeah. Georgian so. is colonial. Georgian is more elegant. Georgian is a lot of details. And isn't it a federalist? <laughs> 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 I just know King George was before Queen Victoria. Well, no, it was, it was well, the, the George one through yeah. everything right. but during George one through the House of Hanover, which, you know, that's why we're called New England. So I thought that a Georgian colonial would fit in oh. quite well with the history. That, we, um, we actually picked the style because we thought, <laughs> we thought that's what the neighborhood would want. Um, right. <clears throat> so so interestingly, now George, George Washington traveled around New England so much and, and saw so many houses that were actually identical to the houses around the corner for you. Yeah. Um, you know, with the center entrance and on the, on the front yeah. facade uh, with usually three or two three or five windows, or five windows usually up above, and, uh, and, and he just, he actually wrote very um, uh, irately about this, just an incredible sameness of New England architecture. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Think of it, because they, they had built these pattern books, because that's right. all they built. You know, yeah. and, um, so, um, anyway. I'm inclined to say that Porsche you just showed me, yeah. and both the front, both, both of them. You would want them both on both sides. And then keep the, Cable. Yes, cable. Yeah, because it's a larger scale and then it's going to simply yeah. it. And it'll, it'll, yeah, we, I think that you're we, right. I think we would, that those, we would prefer that. Yeah. Okay. Don't yeah. fit well on those. Right. On those okay, so. And I would even say you probably don't need the detailing of the windows on the side. I love that. Okay, okay. no, you love it. <laughs> I just, otherwise, because I, then I do feel like it looks very monotonous. Yeah, and we were going to do like the, the acorn with a little. Just to add I, to I that black and white, it breaks white, up the yeah. the, the, the row kind of look. I can't wait to see this. It, it, I really do think it'll be. It, it I think we made a lot of progress tonight, and yeah. I think you have um, those of us who've been with this for a while certainly approve the cable end changes that you made. It just needs to fit in the neighborhood a little bit more, and it's excusable because it's a colonial house, but it's excusable because it it could easily have been an add-on. That somebody put in, um, and that was done all the time. If, if you're walking around the houses in the town, uh, as far as as far as the the entrance on the side, I think it's a big improvement. What been suggested, and you have a picture of it. Yes, and yes, so we'll use that and, picture. And it resolves all the issues okay. that we've had and discussed. So we're ready to go on that. Um, so all that remains is putting it, sort of rendering it into a uh, paper. Drawing, yeah. And, and if we could see that yeah. last one, I could ask as, as builder, can you make sure that the that the framework scale is, is, is appropriately yeah of course yeah. But the, i'm not at, at the end of the day updating the drawings will be by an actual architect yeah we'll go back um, to that part then this is really just yeah. designed to do what we're doing okay. tonight which is it's, it's, a, it's a big 
wide house now. Mm -hmm. Well, not it's wider than it used to be. So um, it, it does need to be scaled up to look mm -hmm. look easier um, while maintaining the proportion. Okay, um, we made progress, and it's good. And thank you so much for the the kind of good faith and and, and creative and open mind that you that you showed in this thing. Thank you. We're, mm -hmm. we're happy to help you out. Thank you. Um, would you want? Do you want us? Do you want to? So the next thing is in the next your next meeting to get on the agenda for your next meeting when we have the drawings. Yeah, or probably be soon. Okay. Have to deal with the lighting issue. Okay. So, so <laughs> unless you don't want to sit through that. Usually not. So what we'd like to do is obviously we, we, we've got to talk to Jesse over at Sick Food Park and um, and see if we can put her, you know, a rough on these. I don't think it'll take her very long to, to make the adjustments. Um, we'll give her the example yeah. picture, mm -hmm. um, discuss what we discussed this evening. Um, so that being said, if we get there and, and we do the things we say we're going to do, I know you guys have to set the next meeting. It sounds like you have to do that because then you won't be meeting for some time. I, I didn't plan to put this on the agenda. If it's not ready, then. Let well, me just ask you. Can, you can, we can do that. I can email you if it's not ready. Yeah. 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 Sarah, can I ask you a technical question? Sure. Can, can we vote to allow the subcommittee to approve the final since we made uh, all You still have to post it. Please? It, uh, it, you could, but you still would have to post it as a meeting and keep minutes and all of that. Okay. So. So it, it might not really have a Be much sooner, okay. It, would, it might not be much sooner than if we yeah. just put it over here. Okay, it, we're, we're acting in good faith with you guys. We're, we really want to green like this for you. Um, we appreciate the changes. Uh, and sorry to put you through an unanticipated agony in, in the midst of everything else that okay. you're doing. I'll put you first on this. <laughs> 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 on the other hand, we're, we're, we're charged with the responsibility of protecting the neighborhoods as you can imagine. And so, um, thank you. Um, if you if if this is finished the, according to the conversations that have happened tonight, I don't see any reason why we would do anything other than give a full approval. Okay. 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 Um, and so, in my in my world, obviously, sure. um, everybody's starting to back up at this point. Right. And if I lose my window, I lose it. Well, I, I was asking about so, whether we could appoint a subcommittee of this committee to approve um, this because if we could meet sooner. But if the drawings are done, though. But the drawings are, yeah. aren't done, and and we and it wouldn't be much sooner anyway because we're going to be meeting in less than 30 days for this full, full committee. So, um, uh, I mean, a lot of people know it's going to happen. So, yeah. So just so you guys are aware, and it's just to give you guys a full picture of, of, of my world, is that obviously you know we can't we can't start to stack people, right? We can't we can't move forward with um, going in and doing you know the fall um, hazardous material assessment of the building, which we're required to do by the state before we do a demolition. We have to then wait ten days uh, for the filing with the state um, in order to start demolition. I can't really go to DEP about disconnects until we get to that point, and I can't order uh, the foundation. I, I, I get everything you're saying. Let me just, I'm going to be trying to be creative yeah. for you. What if, I mean, I, I think we're in, in agreement among us about all the principles, and if if we, we just want to make sure that you get the drawings and it's the plan yeah. before yeah. you, and I may be, I may be naive, but what, what if we, took a printout of the of the of the new porch roof the layout. I'm just don't don't get yeah. I gotta get their approval. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Just, what, if, what if we took a print out of that and said this is what the roof will look like? Because that's the only thing that's not currently drawn. Is that is that you could I mean you could do a finding that the items discussed would meet the intent of the demo delay ordinance and then put it make a contingency that a plan set be submitted prior one more time so so you could find that the intent of the demolition review ordinance is met with through all of the items discussed uh, and then an alternate plan including all of those is approved but that the permit can't the final permit can't actually be issued until the final plan set is provided so that could at least 
And then we would have to, to come to another meeting. We just submit the drawings. Is that would that be? Or it? or come to another. Can meeting? they can they if, if can they send that that photograph? I just want some paperwork to show this is what they're going to build. Sure. And and then we could maybe give. Can we make an approval tonight according to the with the <coughs> contingencies that you just sure. laid out? Yeah. Yeah. And I, again, I'm, I'm, I, I understand we, you know, have to meet your intent. You, you work with community yeah. Yeah. So, can do you have an address here on, um, sir, that you could give them to send that picture to? We have your email. He's yeah. sending. He'll send it to you right now. Okay. Thank you. Um. So, um, can you? When you're done writing, I ask you to frame the vote, um, frame the motion. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? I'm, I'm trying yes. to not yeah. hold, hold them up. I understand it. It's, it's, it's March, yeah. and yeah. I know what that means. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we would be approving whatever the final plans were the next time we met. So, right? Well, yeah. Well, we would at least tell the building department, like, hey, an alternate plan has been approved. You can, so you yeah. can at least start thinking about that. I'm sure they will all come back great, but if they didn't, then we would say, hold on. Yeah, it, in that case. You need to resubmit again. In that case, if you submitted something to the building department that was totally not in compliance with this, you might be able to build it. Okay. I mean, right. It's okay with me if they do the demo, because the whole outline of the, of the house is, is, is more, I think, the sense of the meeting is that it's approvable by us. The only question that we worked on, we, and we, we like the timber trim the only question was concerning this this main entrance entryway so, and we have a photograph of that that we can add to the document and so um i don't see any reason to slow down the demo um and you'll you'll get drawings of the you'll get drawings done by the architect of the entry we're going to start the process tomorrow please we're going to start the process yeah. tomorrow yeah, yeah. With, with the right. it, and that makes we're all in agreement with the demo with the questions of what comes yeah, and it's like there, there are mean, other stuff, so we can very little different. Um, I mean, really, it's just exterior um, cosmetics, frankly. Um, so you wouldn't be able to, to get a full demo permit, but you could at least proceed and get it started with the building. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we start the the uh, the, 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 uh, the, the um, full review right. of the hazmat uh, mm -hmm. review. And get that process started, and then oh, that's right. You've got to strip the. No, I've got actually before that. I have to actually have them go and. Oh, okay. And <laughs> and, and re, they have to go into the house. They have to review. Like I said, that popcorn is oh, right. almost ninety nine point nine percent asbestos, right? So they're going to go in. They're going to take samples of that. They're going to test it. They're going to submit it to the state, and they're going to really test everything. And then, then there's a ten day waiting period. Then the state gives approval, and then they can start their their uh, you know, demolition okay. at that point. But but in the meantime, we can at least start getting that process started. We can get the drawings out to you guys, and um, and uh, hopefully we can okay. get it from. So, um, Sarah, again, can you? Can you frame that motion? Sure. So someone would need to make a motion that the intent of the demolition ordinance is met through an alternate plan that incorporates all of the elements that were discussed tonight. And that before a final demo permit is issued by the building department, that will have to be approved by the historic commission. Does that be true? Yeah, as, as much as, as possible? Yeah, as much as possible. Um, will there be, the, do you think you'll have the numbers to have a vote next meeting? We have the numbers to have a vote now. Uh, now. Okay. Um, it okay. Just, and the reason I didn't, the reason yeah. we did that last time was I was going to sink the poor guy. If, yeah. If, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I vote. <laughs> 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 so you're no. saying they won't need to re vote. It's only if there was a problem with right. what we resubmitted that you would put a hold on. Okay. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. okay. That's right. Fantastic. You may want your architect to look at the sheer calculations. Okay, yeah. the, the cheer walls have actually, uh, we've actually moved that in and given it more wall. Okay. But that, there, there's an entire page if you want to look at there's cheer walls that, <laughs> that beat the band. Thank you. Yeah. Now there's uh, there, the, the exterior walls of the first level are about 
60% shear wall okay. structure. Okay. Very good. So, um, what is the so, that, so that, and you, you've made that motion? I, now I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, there a second, so is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, is there any request for a discussion beyond what we have on a yeah, call the motion and all those in favor of this say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a PDF? Do you have a PDF? Yep, I'll just so send you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a PDF uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, that's fine. And then, uh, and then we'll send the final drawings of the PDF okay. to you. You don't need them in the yep. Are you want to hang on to the hard copies we've got here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you do that? And then, um, and then I'll send PDFs to you. Okay. Cool. Right. Thank you. And you'll get the report picture. We're going to send that. That's already yeah. been sent. Yeah, she's got it. She's got it. Okay. We emailed it to her. Thank you. Nice work. Thank you. 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 Thank much as I like to stay here until 11 o'clock. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other, can I just say, uh, the tough, tough issue. <laughs> but uh, we'll pause here. I have one thing I just want to announce. Actually, not on the agenda. I think it's okay for me to talk about um, Florence. Yes, oh, sure. sure. Okay. So um, last Wednesday night, the Community Preservation Committee met to review the ap applications, and the Abolition and Reform District was on the was had applied for money to hire a consultant to get it onto the National Register, and it was approved um, by oh, the commission. Great. But Dylan was there, and the presentations that were get given by the supporters of that were unbelievable. It was I mean, yeah. commission members are just sitting there like they could, it was it was so moving. Mm -hmm. Um, now okay. I don't know. Probably a dozen people spoke, and oh. just really, and really from all different angles. A couple all dozen different angles. Wow. Yeah. Yep. It was really, really moving, and I felt really, um, just really, really happy and proud that you know we put that forward, and it's going to happen. Oh, good for you. Fantastic. So it's great. It's really, really good. So approved for the full thirty thousand or whatever. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be really great. So it's good. Well, that, that group and, and Steve, is such an asset. Yeah, the people. He's, he's so a gem. Are you familiar with that, Emily? You have to like, read up about it. But there was a whole utopian community in Florence in the early 19th century um, that attracted women and men and black, you know, very large African American community. And they all lived together um, and operated a farm and um, made, mm -hmm. you know, raised silkworms. And, um, so there, there are remnants of that, just the community there. They're in the houses that are um, present. There's a cemetery there. There's a, a, a park that was, or a memorial that was built to honor Sir Jenner True, who was a Elishist, who lived there for a while, owned a house and lived in the district. So it's a very large National Register district. I don't know how many resources are in it, a lot. Um, so we're, uh, as a consultant, it's going to get hired to put it on there. And Steve Primer, who was the principal mm -hmm. light, uh, yeah. light yeah. of uh, collective copies, is uh, is a, just an extraordinarily talented historian of um, of that era and that, that, that locale, uh, and conducts um, tours uh, for school groups and um, brings the community together for, for the projects, and it's just has a level of knowledge that is just beyond uh, even even most historians, uh, for most professional historians, is an extraordinary guy. Um, There's a, a center up there, um, the David Reco Center, which was uh, saved, and it was a building that was saved, yeah, and mm -hmm. made into this uh, beginnings of a you know, history museum about that whole community. So it's really exciting, and um, yeah, it's great. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well done, yeah, congrats. So, um, and and uh, we put you on the hot seat. <laughs> um, yes, I want to do it. Was that great. recorder turns off? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's. Uh, um, there are plenty of things we can talk about in the future. Obviously, 
and was brought up to us this evening, we need to um, soon address some of the anomalies in our regulations uh, so that they're not confusing to the public. Um, and uh, we'll take that up at a future date. I'm anxious to do it. I hate to give a short trip, but it's late. So I should probably uh, wrap it up. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. aye.